seen such a live stream. Got it. Okay. So, because I everywhere I go on the road or in the hospital or in the college or in the school, people are obese, morbid obese. I am sure people are having severe obesity. Obesity related problems, not getting married, not having children. Huh? And what is that? Um, body shame. People are committed suicide. Even some people are murdered. I think many movies have it's a important uh, program. We need to do something. I think I have seen many programs or any diet plan failing. Initially, we lose. Even I have uh, tried uh, paleo diet. About I think in SRM when I was working, I was in paleo diet. I tried it because I had joint pain. So I followed the paleo diet. I lost a few kilos. It's very difficult to follow all this diet plan. When I went to Himachal Pradesh and Gujarat and all, there is no non-vegetarian hotel at all. So very difficult to follow. So I come across this uh, intermittent fasting. I have uh, I've seen many people losing weight and benefited uh, even pediatricians and other people. So I got this idea. So uh, with the help of IAPT NIC, we are hosting this uh, conference. And uh, it's not only doctors, many non-medical people also participate in this. It's a great, uh, I think I have started one uh, WhatsApp group also. It is uh, intermittent fasting for weight loss and health. It is not only for um, uh, weight loss, it is also for other so much of benefit. I am enjoying, Dr. Tamilmani is enjoying, Dr. Satish Kumar, even Dr. Rajkumar, Prasanna, everyone is enjoying, including Dr. Dr. S. Balasubramanian has lost about five to six kilos and he is a storm following. He said he will never going to give up intermittent fast. So such a wonderful way of life. It is a lifestyle change. So. Uh, for this event, I welcome once again all of you and uh, my sincere welcome to our uh, President, Dr. Suresh Balan, Dr. Tirumurugan, the Secretary, and our President, IAP, uh, Tiruvannamalai Branch President, Dr. Um, Tamilmani and uh, Dr. Um, uh, Prabhagaran and also our Treasurer, Dr. Satish Kumar, our uh, mentor and uh, Advisor Dr. Karna Nidhi and also yes, uh, Dr. S. Balasupramani also has joined this uh, program. And um, uh, once again, I welcome you all and uh, request uh, uh, Suresh Balan is not there. Okay, you can. Uh, uh, yeah, Suresh Balan? Suresh Balan? Sir, am I yeah, yeah. audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Sir, am I audible? Yeah, please say a few words. No? Just inaugurate the conference. I think yes. at the outset, I am very grateful and I am very great to our Suresh Balan. They, I think they are not audible. Not audible. Your internet connectivity is not good. I think it's a wonderful event on intermittent fasting for weight loss and health, uh, which is being uh, organized by the IAP Thiruvannamalai branch, as well as the IAP Tamil Nadu state chapter. And uh, I'm also uh, uh, very thankful to all the uh, participants, as well as the, all the speakers, especially the chairperson, uh, Dr. Somasegar sir, past president of IAP TNSC and Ramesh Babu, as well as uh, the uh, various speakers, uh, Dr. Pavala uh, Vedi, uh, Professor Gunasingh sir, Dr. Kavida, Dr. Rajesh Kumar, and uh, Dr. Balasubramani sir, Director of uh, KCTH, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Prasanna sir, HOD of Pediatrics, SRM, and uh, Ranjit Pradap, the Senior Associate Diabetologist. So we have got a, a huge uh, panel of uh, speakers. And uh, what I am very much uh, uh, 
congratulations he for the society as my my plus as my is he chair okay suresh suresh balan it is not audible uh, anyway th thank you very much for your kind words With your support we will uh, conduct a physical conference in chennai or other place i think it is a need of the hour i request our uh, secretary dr tirumurgan tirumurgan is there hello sir yes sir. Yeah. please say uh, please say a few words thank you very much sir um sir i'm very sir sir kekra sir yeah kekra sir kekra sir, yeah. sir. 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 going through another phone also so uh, really he is uh, not a person who is uh, uh, not a just uh, person who just preaches but he is a person who practices and uh, i have been uh, seeing uh, professor gunas singh sir during the last uh, eb meeting at kanyakumari where i uh, saw him uh, Uh, no, uh, uh, very careful about diet. Uh, he was not even touching a coffee or a snacks or anything. And uh, I was really astonished when he said that he is uh, fasting for about eighteen hours a day, as well as uh, cycling for more than ten uh, kilometers a day. And uh, recently, I witnessed him climbing uh, one of a very uh, unusual uh, mountain and uh, hilly area. So. really is a great thing at this age uh, a doctor who is so physically active mentally active vibrant and uh, showing the next generation how to be healthy and happy is one thing which is really uh, fascinating and i really appreciate professor gunas singh sir and i know that uh, there are a lot of uh, eminent speakers who are going to deliberate on this topic even myself i forwarded this to so many of my friends who are non medical also they really congratulated me for iaptnsc as well as iap tirunamalai for taking this wonderful initiative which will be a boon to each and every one of us to maintain ourselves as a healthy happy and active pediatricians and wish this cme a great success and uh, uh, which will be a, a boon for each and every one of us thank you very much sir professor gunas thank, sir thank you for suresh balan for your thank guidance you, i think under thank your you. guidance we can conduct a physical conference please help us yes, to we will do yes, it sir. some yes, place sir. Yes, i think yes sir sure yeah. sir thank I you sir thank you you, you can uh, i will uh, you hope this will be available in the net also uh, everyone can go through that so we will definitely do it i think this is a first of its kind we will do it to us thank you thank you sir thank you Bala. thank you best wishes sir primurugan yes sir uh, good evening everyone uh, at the outset uh, i would like to congratulate uh, professor gunas singh sir for uh, taking the lead as the apps initiative of our president uh, dr suresh palan sir the happy active uh, healthy pediatricians um it's common news these days that almost every other day we hear about one of our friends or colleagues or very not very old people things just developing his major uh, uh, heart disease or major and uh, having major uh, uh, heart attacks or even dying It is very sad to hear, given that uh, we have all worked so hard through a prime of our life, and then at the end of it, uh, one after we finished achieving our uh, aim of uh, uh, academic success, we are not able to have a peaceful life because we have neglected ourselves. Uh, I am very impressed with uh, Dr. Guna Singh Sir's initiative of inter uh, uh, intermittent fasting. Uh, and uh, the commitment towards it uh, when we listen to him i often wonder is it even possible but uh, he is one living example to show that it is possible and it makes everyone active and healthy and going by the personal experiences of dr uh, professor guna singh sir professor tamramani sir uh, dr sbs sir and so many more uh, it is something which has changed not only your weight but also the internal well being and uh, the many illnesses which seem to be for which we seem to need a lot of medication seem to have gone away uh, so i'm i'm very happy that uh, we are able to do this online program as sir said we will try to have a physical program uh, 
to promote this initiative and thank you very much sir and uh, wishing you all the great success for this program and my special thanks and congratulations to all the very speakers of the program thank you very much uh, thank you trimurugan for all the help you have given me i thank request you, our uh, president uh, dr tamilmani say uh, to say a few words uh, good evening friends i am uh, very happy uh, today that uh, a great initiative by our uh, uh, beloved uh, guna singh sir has come true and a lot of more than 100 participants are there and uh, by the guidance of uh, dr our president suresh balan and uh, tirumurugan and our pala subramaniam sir sir and other speakers uh, i am sure uh, this program will go on as a success thank you very much sir thank you tamil mani sir i request our uh, vice president uh, dr prabhakar is there prabhakar say yes, sir is there yes yes sir uh, thank you very much sir good evening friends uh, i am really amazed to take part in such a meeting at this time uh, getting up from the uh, afternoon sleep and uh, joining fresh for this uh, meeting i hope uh, this will be useful for everybody uh, especially for me thank you okay pa thank you prabhakar i request our treasurer uh, satish to say a few words hello uh, good evening sir on behalf of iap tiruvannamalai am i audible sir yeah 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 on behalf of iap tiruvannamalai we welcome everyone to this uh, evening uh, zoom meeting for uh, intermittent fasting uh 6 months back when professor uh, had a small talk with uh, our uh, iap out of uh, pediatric topic uh, he started uh, telling about intermittent fasting and uh, blue zone diet all those things when he just initiated uh, intermittent fasting program and then subsequently after 3 months i was really surprised to see his uh, motivation and uh, previously when we used to meet together he usually i used to drink uh, antacid syrups uh, frequently telling that after getting uh, food from uh, hotels he feels uh, gastritis and all those uh, thing he is not able to sleep and after 3 months of things uh, starting intermittent fasting he told like uh, he not only losing weight he is uh, out of acid peptic disease which he was suffering for more than uh, 20 years and i was also suffering from acid peptic disease as such uh, my weight was not uh, too heavy i was not in the borderline uh, weight of uh, around uh, bmi of uh, 27 with my waist of uh, 93 cm then i thought i should also do something so that i can at least get rid of uh, acid peptic disease surprisingly after starting my intermittent fasting i didn't do anything uh, more i was not able to convince my family to prepare some uh, special thing uh, for my diet previously i was trying all the diet plans it was not working out for me intermittent fasting there is nothing to prepare just we have to skip meals so there is no pressure from my home side to get into this fasting mode and i was really very happy to start the fasting and i really enjoyed after a few days of fasting i usually in my op around 12 o'clock i feel severe gastric pain and uh, severe gastritis i feel like i get irritated i will not be able to concentrate uh, in my opd i will feel uh, shout with the patients now after this entirely the uh, acid peptic disease has gone now i am comfortable even after 2:30 i am not feeling like uh, i should take uh, lunch we'll finish the opd and then aram say go and take lunch it's kind of uh, that much improvement i am seeing acid peptic disease my weight was around 63 kilos and now i am uh, 58.4 with just 3 uh, months of fasting not doing anything except skipping the breakfast previously itself i was not taking uh, coffee tea and uh, uh, those things uh, in the morning so it was easy for me to skip breakfast go to opd and uh, finish my uh thing and then start my lunch lunch and dinner alone i take for uh, between 2 o'clock and uh, again at 8 o'clock i uh, take and then i will uh, complete my uh, eating window and then proceed it was very comfortable for me to follow and now for the past 1 uh, to 2 weeks after seeing the weight loss people used to uh, now ask me 
சார் என்ன சார் நல்லா வெயிட்டை குறைச்சிட்டீங்க நல்லா இருக்கீங்களே எங்க வேற தெரியறீங்கன்னு சொல்றாங்க இந்த மொட்டை அடிச்சு போனது இல்லாம நோ ஐம் கெட்டிங் தி காம்ப்ளிமெண்ட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் தி பேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃப்ரம் தி கொலிக்ஸ் ஆல்சோ எஸ்டே அனசடிஸ் வென் ஐ வாஸ் கோயிங் ஃபார் த கால் ஹி டோல் மீ ஹே யூ ஹேவ் ரெடியூஸ் த என்டைர்லி யுவர் அப்டமன் இஸ் கான் யூ டெல் மீ தி டிப்ஸ் ஹவு டு டூ திஸ் அண்ட் ஜாயின் மீ ஐ வாஸ் ஃபீலிங் வெரி ஹாப்பி i have to thank really professor to getting me involved in that and we both uh, myself and professor trek to that uh, parvata malai it was very tough task for us but we didn't feel any uh, loss of energy only thing we felt was the, if water was there we will be very much comfortable other than that we didn't have any issues uh, going for 18 to 20 hours of uh, fast during that day and walking for almost 8 kilometers trekking in the hill up and down so i thank everyone please join start intermittent fasting and reap the benefits from uh, weight loss obesity uh, acid peptic disease knee joints sleep disturbance for uh, professor everything has gone so this is a magic pill for everyone without pill without doing any extra work we will reap the uh, maximum benefit yeah. uh, thank you sir for uh, you. giving me an opportunity thank, thank you. you satish uh, you are the i been uh, beneficiaries i think practitioner <laughs> so, <laughs> yes sir yes sir really uh, it was and like I, i now i we will go to the program because we have to finish up by at least by 7:30 i request the chairperson to take over the stage i think i welcome uh, dr ramesh babu former president i hope uh, dr somesekar is not here i think so so uh, over to dr ramesh babu i think the first lecture i uh, Sir, I saw Dr. Somasegar's name also, sir. Is it? Uh, Hello, Kumar is there. Hello, Dr. Somasegar. Anyway, Ramesh Babu. I'm here, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am here, I'm, sir. I am here, sir. I am here, sir. You are here. Yeah. Anyway, with my closed yeah, eyes. Please, go to the chairperson. I think uh, you can start with Ramesh Babu. And sir, good evening, sir. You can share the screen. Sir, over to Ramesh Babu and Somasegar. good evening sir thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity sir uh, we are seeing the benefits of intermittent fasting uh, personally when i met you in uh, thirunamalai for during the inaugural uh, function of uh, ap thirunamalai branch and also uh, your branch president dr uh, tamil mani sir uh, subsequently i saw him in uh, pedicon to in uh, madurai i was able to note the difference of tamil mani sir's effect of intermittent fasting on tamil mani sir sir one simple what i myself personally observed was during the scenario of covid <coughs> during the lockdown phase uh, we were all were uh, using masks as well as most of the shops were closed and uh, most of the canteens everything were closed we used to take only breakfast in the home and uh, there is no practice not practicing at all for a quite a period of 3 to 6 months time what i observed was i lost weight by around 3 to 4 kg i used to take 3 to 4 times per day coffee or tea and some snacks which it was not there during the covid period and uh, also the duration of interval because there is no need to go for clinic or uh, hospital at the time uh, except for uh, our uh, government hospital or uh, used to take break uh, the dinner early by 7:30 and all indirectly there was some period of intermittent fasting but i i had doubt whether uh, due to we have some exposure to covid infection and all like that because some realizations non specific you are also we had but people used to ask at the same time you have lost your weight uh, you did you check for the parameters health parameters they asked but finally now i can realize that it was one of the uh, benefit of intermittent fasting uh, so after covid period is over i re i regained my weight but i can still understand the benefits of intermittent pa- fasting i am maintaining my bmi close to 25 to 26 sir 
thank you for uh, your efforts guna singh sir for uh, creating such a wonderful group and sensitizing all towards the benefits of intermittent fasting uh, which helps in reducing obesity and you have made it a point that only exercise alone cannot make one to lose weight and also your dietary habits as well as uh, uh, discipline in carrying out it are the uh, the main corner stones for the success over to this we will go to the uh, speaker dr pavalavili to give his start thank you sir madam you can proceed uh, yes sir Hi. so good evening everyone so i'll be talking about science behind intermittent fasting today emma nee nee unmute panikka nee yes sir nee mattu unmute panikka okay sir ha ya 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 so screen yeah audible yes sir so good morning to good evening to everyone today i'll be talking about science behind the properly. but once we understand why we are doing it and what are the benefits of doing it it will be, it will help us to stick on to the uh, fasting diet more effectively so that is one important reason for us to understand the science behind intermittent fasting so what is fasting so fasting simply means not consuming any calorie containing foods that is fasting so when we talk about intermittent fasting we are fixing one particular interval of time during which we do not eat anything the practice of intermittent fasting helps us to train the body by mindfully teaching the body as to when to be hungry so uh, before going uh, completely into the topic first we need to understand from where do we get the energy so the source of this energy are from carbohydrates amino acids and fats so what happens we do not eat food continuously it's not like we are eating at by 8 o'clock we are eating 9 10 we are not eating regularly we eat we eat in the morning we eat in the afternoon or whenever we are hungry so what happens is we eat food it gets stored and and when we are uh, uh, feeling hungry again the stored fuel is being reused that is called a star feed cycle so this uh, particular uh, image it it helps us to understand how the all the carbohydrates uh, fats and protein all how they are uh, interlinked between them so first we'll start with the glucose so glucose is the main fuel that we're being used so what happens is to harvest that particular energy from glucose it has to go through tca cycle this is the tca krebs cycle it has to go through tca cycle we can also note that not just glucose fatty acids as well as proteins enters this tca cycle so what happens is if there is glucose it is used utilized for energy if there is excess of glucose it is stored as glycogen and if there is further excess what happens is this glucose in turn will be stored as fat so that is where we come we do we, we may say that i don't eat more fat i only eat food uh, rice it doesn't contain much fat no it's not like that even if glucose is more it will be converted to a uh, fatty acid and it will be stored as fat so what happens in metabolism in the well fed state so what happens when we eat more when we eat more the blood sugar level that is glucose level rises so when blood glucose level rises the insulin level also rises so when insulin level rises it causes the following pathways that is glycolysis that is utilization of glucose for energy glycogenesis as i said before glucose is stored in the form of glycogen next is lipogenesis lipogenesis means this excess of glucose is stored in the form of fat which is the which is what this adipose tissue is all about so during well fed state the main hormone that is uh, there in our body is insulin and during fasting what happens when during fasting our blood sugar level falls down which triggers the secretion of glucagon as well as insulin level falls 
So uh, this particular PowerPoint shows us that in the energy expenditure state uh, during the post-absorptive period, immediately after food, glucose uptake, glucose is the main source of energy. But as time passes, when we are fasting, the utilization of glucose as a source of energy reduces, in turn, lipid oxidation. Uh, lipid oxidation means breakdown, utilizing fat for energy. So that gets predominant. So I'll repeat again. So immediately after meal, what happens is glucose is utilized as a main source of energy. But as we are fasting, when we don't eat, what happens is instead of glucose, glucose is not the preferred store, so, uh, source of fuel. Instead, fat is being utilized. That is lipid oxidation means breaking of uh, fat for utilization as energy. So uh, this graph uh, tells us what happens during what happens uh, in the various hours of fast, fast starvation or that is fasting. So initially, uh, as the hours of uh, fasting progresses, the level of insulin falls and the level of glucagon rises. And we can see this uh, black dotted line, black lines are uh, glucose. We can see the uh, level of glucose falls. So when the glucose level falls, what happens is the blood ketone body level rises. So this blue one is the ketone bodies. So ketone bodies are nothing but the uh, product of uh, fats. They are the product of fats. I didn't go into the uh, biochemistry in detail. But when fatty acids are broken down, the product we are getting is ketone bodies. So now because of uh, fatty acid bro uh, breakage, what we are getting is ketone bodies. So here we are seeing that during fasting, blood glucose level falls and blood ketone body level rises. So this is a very key point in every type of uh, fasting, not just intermittent fasting, cal calorie restriction, ketogenic diet, and all kinds of diet, this is what is happening. So uh, this is, okay. So in blood glucose level falls and ketone body level rises. We can also see gradually the stored form of glucose, that is the glycogen level is also getting reduced. So this is important because, so whenever we are in fasting, it's like intermittent fasting. So we are, there is a, uh, there is some amount of energy restrictions. It's not like a complete calorie restriction. There is some minimal energy that di di diet is getting reduced. So the storage form of glycogen will also be reduced, which will be helpful for us whenever during fasting. So again, so what happens in fasting? In During fasting from our uh, intestine, you're not getting any food. Okay. So the blood glucose level falls. What happens is from the pancreas, glucagon is being secreted. What this glucagon does is, it forms, uh, uh, it produces glucose from other sources. So that is non-carbohydrate sources of glucose are being activated for the synthesis of glucose. So uh, after, after a certain period of time, this glucose level is not sufficient to maintain the, uh, as a source of fuel. Now what happens is adipose tissue, that is the part where the fat is being stored. So this, this hormone acts on the adipose tissue and the fatty acids are broken down. This fatty acids are mobilized to the liver the organ from where the ketone bodies are being synthesized, their ketone bodies come and this ketone bodies act on, uh, this ketone bodies become the main source of fuel. This ketone bodies become the main source of fuel, yes. Now what happens is, this ketone body is being utilized by skeletal muscles, by brain. Other than RBCs, almost every organ utilizes ketone bodies as a source of energy. Yes. And uh, this particular graph shows us the glucose homeostasis. So even when we are using ketone bodies, we need small amount of glucose for utilization. And that in first it comes from uh, our diet. Next, it is coming from glycogen. And third, it is coming from during uh, via gluconeogenesis. So what is gluconeogenesis? Gluconeogenesis is nothing but production of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. So what are the non-carbohydrate sources? It can be protein. It can be fat. Even from fat, not Fat per se, when fatty acids are broken down, glycerol is one of the product that is uh, that is coming from uh, lipolysis. So from glycerol, glucose can be synthesized. So this is a normal fasting picture. This doesn't account for intermittent fasting, but this is a normal fasting picture. We can see in the first four hours, it is a dietary glucose that is giving uh, rise to the blood glucose level. Next in the four to 16 hours, it is... Sorry, ma'am, your voice is not coming. Probably not audible. 
What happened? Emma, Pavlavli? Sir, cake then, sir. Pavlavli? Sir? Hello, sir? Sir? Yeah, yeah. Now it is already been done. Now it is already been done. Now it is already been done. You can proceed. Now, now. Yes, okay. So, so far we've discussed about the various. Uh, especially we discussed about glucose and ketone bodies. So that is what is happening in the clinical biochemistry level. So now we are going to the hormonal. So what's happening in the hormonal side? So uh, we have discussed one hormone that is insulin. Uh, the next is leptin. So leptin hormone is very important to us because leptin is being pr pr produced from the adipose tissue. The more the adipose tissue, more the leptin. In general, what leptin does is it asks the brain to stop eating. It just says enough, the food. It uh, stimulates the satiety signal. Satiety means stop eating. So what happens is when more of adipose tissue is being there in our body, more leptin is being synthesized and leptin resistance comes, which means it, it goes and orders this hypothalamus, please, enough, don't eat more. But the hypothalamus doesn't listen to it. That is, leptin resistance comes in overeating. In obesity, leptin resistance comes. This leptin is also having another side effect called pro-inflammatory. That is, it releases the inflammatory mediators into the bloodstream. What does inflammatory mediators do? It causes inflammation, inflammation, which is the uh, reason for uh, or more, more diseases like diabetes, mellitus, cardiovascular diseases. So, so every disease can be attributed to inflammation and leptin is one of the reasons behind it. Next, coming to adiponectin. So adiponectin is also coming from adipose tissue, but it is having opposite action of uh, leptin. So what adiponectin does is it is an anti-diabetic. And also, it is an anti-inflammatory. So what happens? So it is a good thing. So it doesn't mean adipo so adiponectin is small. It is good. No, it's not like that. What happens is when the level of adipose tissue increases, there is a fall in adiponectin. So when the adipo adip uh, when the in obese person, what happens is they are having very less adiponectin. So that is another reason contributing for their diabetogenic effect. Obese people are more prone to develop diabetes mellitus because one of the reason is reduced adiponectin. Yes. So what happens in intermittent fasting? So far, we discussed about the various fuel that was used by the body. So what happens in intermittent fasting is that there is a transition of the usage of fuel. So the main source of fuel, normally it is glucose. But during intermittent fasting, there is metabolic switching. There is a, a transfer or there, there's a transition in the utilization of fuel from glucose to fatty acids or ketone bodies. We should understand this ketone bodies come from fatty acid only. So this, there's a shift from the utilization of uh, glucose to fatty acids. Okay. So, uh, so from various research has been conducted and we can see that in the first one, this particular individual was uh, having, uh, having his meals three times a day along with snacks. So we can see his glucose level got elevated. It, 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 it was decreased, glucose increased, decreased, but in the ketone body level is constantly just kept low only. So in the second type, that is an alternate day feast, uh, intermittent fasting, this particular person followed alternate day intermittent fasting, we can see that just before he having his meal, that is from 12 a.m. to, uh, this is alternate day fasting, 12 p.m., 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. So his ketone body level gradually rised. So once he started having his meal, the ketone body level falls. So he's having glucose, three times glucose, the next day his uh, ketone body level fell. But when he's not having meals, his ketone body level is rising. So next is the uh, switch, to, uh, switch flipped daily. That is 18 hours of fast and 6 hours is having his meal. In that we can see. So ketone body level is raised. Then he's having his meals. So glucose level is getting increased. So again, he's in fasting. So gradually his ketone body level is increased. So we can see that in our daily routine, if you're having meals continuously, more, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, ketone body level will not be raised. On the other hand, when we are following intermittent fasting, ketone body level gradually it in, uh, raises. Okay, so why should ketone body, I'm talking about ketone bodies again and again, why should ketone body level be raised? So what happens is uh, ketone body is one of the main, very, very important ketone body is beta hydroxybutyrate. What happens is it causes... Uh, 
it causes increased CAMP level in the cells. So uh, at, at what I'm trying to say is that there is a reduced amount of stress inside the cell when ketone bodies are being utilized as a source of energy. So it reduces the uh, cellular stress. Okay, now coming to the eating patterns. So we should understand that uh, hormones are not the only control of how we eat. So there are hedonic inputs. Hedonic input means the pleasure. When we're seeing food, we feel a uh, certain amount of food may uh, may, may cause uh, some pleasure in uh, the person. So they wanted to eat the food, environmental impulse. So when we are among friends, the person is eating, we want to eat. Next, the taste. When we know that particular food will taste good, we want to eat it more. And next is the emotional factors. So it is said that when you're sad, the amount of uh, serotonin level will be reduced. So that time we want to eat more. So all these factors affect if you want to eat food or not. So other than that, adipose tissue. As I told before, lip. Olavili, Eva not audible, not audible. What happened? Hello. Hello. Right. Totally, your video also not seen, sir. Huh? Hello, maybe, maybe net problem. Not audible. Are you getting the signal, ma? Is a video there? Oh, gone. Hmm. Okay. I think, sir. I think can you... they are having net net problem. I think Ramesh Babu. Yes, sir. Go, go ahead with uh, Doctor. Um, sir, next next is your topic only, uh, sir. Uh, probably you are uh, you just uh, audible. Please unmute. Probably please unmute yourself. Yeah. Am I cake, sir? Sir, am I audible now, sir? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you are audible. Sir, yes, quickly, sir. quickly. Another two issues, minutes, sir. you have to finish. Am I yes, two sir. minutes only? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, there are various hormones that are involved in uh, control of appetite. So we can see that ghrelin, which comes from the stomach, it tells us that when the stomach is empty, it is stimulating our, our uh, brain to ask us to eat more. It is an appetite signal asking us to eat more. Whereas insulin, on the other hand, when we eat, when uh, when the stomach is full, it is uh, when blood glucose level increases, it is asking us to eat less. That is, it is a satiety signal. So that is a normal thing. So what happens during fasting? During fasting, the ghrelin which is actually which will, which will be uh, which will be secreted from the stomach it should ask us to eat more it doesn't happen it gets regularized so what happens is hunger comes in waves so consumption choices impact these waves so our body understands that we, we will not be eating for a long time if we are following it as a practice so ghrelin level will not be increased so now coming to intermittent fasting and weight loss so uh, so far we, we saw that our body switches from the utilization of glucose to ketone bodies. So this ketone body is coming from adipose tissue. So when adipose tissue is being utilized for the production of ketone bodies, there is reduction in the mass of adipose tissue, uh, which results in the weight loss. So that is how intermittent fasting is related to weight loss. Intermittent fasting and insulin resistance. So what happens is during fasting, adipose tissue mass is getting reduced. So as I told before, from uh, adipose tissue, various hormones are secreted, various inflammatory mediators are secreted. All those things, all this inflammation are getting stopped. At the same time, when we're uh, using beta-hydroxybutyrate as the main, that is ketone bodies as the main source of fuel, which means, again, the blood insulin level drops. So when the blood insulin level drops, insulin resistance is also being reversed. So we can see that in intermittent fasting, there is mild energy deficit. This results in the reduced in the adipose tissue mass, which decreases the leptin resistance and it increases adiponectin. This in turn will reduce chronic inflammation, which again, which results in the insulin sensitization or insulin resensitization also can be said. 
Now, so at last, I, uh, intermittent fasting, it decreases obesity. It decreases dyslipidemia. Dyslipidemia means uh, varied cholesterol levels. So it, it is getting decreased and it decreases the inflammation. It uh, decreases insulin resistance and it also decreases hypertension. So what it also what happens is because of energy restriction, mitochondrial biogenesis and mitochondrial uncoupling happens. So when I say mitochondrial uncoupling, it means that when we're utilizing energy, it is released as heat. ATP is not produced and heat is being liberated. We say that some people, because they eat, even when they eat more, they do not gain fat because they are rich in brown adipose tissue, which causes mitochondrial uncoupling. And intermittent fasting is also related, to, uh, it, it is said to uh, revive this brown adipose tissue in adults, causing them to not store the energy that we eat. Instead, it is liberated as heat. Mitochondrial uncoupling happens. All this promotes cell survival and improvement in health and diseases. So I uh, like to conclude with saying that intermittent fasting and subsequent adaptive response lead to increased expression of antioxidant defense, DNA repair, protein quality control, mitochondrial biogenesis, downregulation of inflammation, it restores autophagy and improve the cognitive and learning abilities. So thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, madam. Thank you for thank your you. nice lecture, for your nice uh, presentation on the metabolism of carbohydrate, protein, and fat. Uh, stop, stop sharing, ma. All of you. Stop sharing. Yes, sir. Thank well, you, ma. Uh, thank you for your nice lecture. Yes. Thank sir, you. Sir, Ramesh Babu, sir. Yes, sir. Swami is there. Don't know, sir. Swami is there, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank ah. you very much, sir. sir and I next thank topic, you. Next topic, sir. Sir, I am really... Kavita, Kavita. Kavita, Kavita. Sir, I am thankful to uh, Professor Dr. Gunasing. He is a doyen and uh, he is a master of all trades. And in fact, uh, for the last, I think, one year, he had been following it up in principle. Uh, when we met him in Kodai Pedicon mm -hmm. also, he was totally on IF for 18 hours. And the write-up which he had probably posted changed my lifestyle. I started practicing since last eight, eight weeks. Initially, for first one week, I was a little bit sick enough. Then later, from second week onwards, I started, you know, the normal life. Started walking, I Kavita, Kavita, start sharing. Huh. Sir, yep. make me host, sir. I can't share now, sir. Oh, oh. Yes, sir. Uh, Buzz, go, go ahead. Buzz. Yeah, yeah, definitely, sir. Uh, so, yeah. what I felt, uh, I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I even, uh, even today is my third day of my eye surgery following, uh, you know, like uh, the cataract as well as the uh, glaucoma. I am following the eye of 18 hours. So, I feel fully, you know, I am controlled. And the one thing which what I wanted to share with you all that this has got a lot of therapeutic value in the sense that it could control all your emotions. When I met Dr. Uh, Tamil Mani at uh, in IPA Congress, I was cracking some joke and making fun of this uh, uh, great science behind. But he never, you know, showed any sort of uh, anguish on me. Then I realized that this got really something does wonder. Mm -hmm. It could control all your emotions. Like, for for example, and one thing what I feel, what I feel that you are really uh, well with your better off. You never, you know, like get angry with whatever your wife does nowadays. <laughs> this is the one benefit which I have really wanted to share with all of you. And there are great speakers here. Professor Dr. SPSR is here. I think uh, let us all wait for what he is going to say. And uh, I thank the IAP TNSC and the IAP Thirodamalai for taking this uh, initiative and wish the program a grand success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bart. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank Thank you, sir. Now over to Dr. Kavida, madam, for her talk on autophagy and intermittent fasting. Madam, please start, oh, madam. Yeah, matongla mute pani ta, ni mat unmute pani ka. Niye pani kila. Ah, yeah. <coughs> Hello, I am Dr. Kavita, Assistant Professor in the Department of Pathology, Arunai Medical College. First of all, I would thank my dean, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, 
Our next 15 minutes, I'll be talking about autophagy and intermittent fasting. So actually intermittent fasting is a time-restricted feeding pattern which has got a plethora of health benefits. It helps to lose weight, increase the lifespan, it helps to deal stress efficiently, increases the cognitive abilities, and also it helps to manage the diabetes efficiently. So how many of you have heard the word uh, autophagy? Actually, it comes from the Greek word auto means self, phagy means self-eating. Here we have a gentleman who is starving. Uh, did you know your body has the ability to eat itself? Your body uses itself as a fuel, cleaning up all the junk. This is called autophagy. As already said, autophagy is derived from Greek word auto means self, phagy means eating. It is a process in which the cell eats its own cell contents. Uh, it involves the delivery of cytoplasmic waste materials to the rhizosomes for recycling. So autophagy is an evolutionary conserved survival mechanism. Uh, so when there is any nutrient deprivation, so what happens means that this organism uses this autophagy mechanism to recycle the nutrients and use them when it is needed. Actually, it is an incredibly uh, critical process. Here, the cell, here all of your cells, uh, because of this way, body clears out of the cellular garbage, put particles. I'm not audible. Last slide is not audible. I'll repeat, ma'am. So actually, autophagy is an evolutionary conserved survival mechanism. In case of any nutrition deprivation, so this autophagy can help the organism to recycle the nutrients and also use them when it is needed. Clear, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Proceed. So autophagy is an actually an incredibly critical process. Uh, by this way, the cells use this uh, mechanism to clear out the all the cellular garbage, food particles, viruses, bacteria, inflammatory molecules, and even cancer cells. Uh, actually, cell, autophagy is a self-eating at a cellular level. Each of our cells has got the healing power. And this autophagy switches on the healing power of the cell and activates them and helps to start repairing themselves. Uh, when we look the cell under a microscope, we can see the lysosome, which contain uh, these are the lysosomes, uh, which contains about different types of enzymes that helps to break down proteins, DNA, RNA, polysaccharides, and even lipids. Anything that is considered as a garbage uh, will merge with this lysosome and they create an autophagosome. This is where the place the uh, un unwanted materials get break down and recycling takes place. As already said, these are the cytoplasmic-based materials which are sur uh, surrounded by this isolated membrane which is derived from the endoplasmic reticulum plasma membrane. And these form the autophagosome. This autophagosome combines with that of the lysosome and they form the autophagolysosome which delivers the uh, digestive enzymes. So these uh, particles are degraded. Uh, degraded. So autophagy is a removing, recycling and regenerating at the cellular level. So uh, actually, uh, imagine when you are starving. So at the stress strain environment, you do not get enough food or energy for the metabolic process to occur. So in that situation, we have got a more number of non-functional proteins in our body. These non-functional proteins, uh, they will be switched on by the autophagy. So these non-functional proteins degrade them and they use for the production of new proteins for the energy requirement. So this is how autophagy is beneficial. So he is Dr. Yushnari Oshami. Uh, he, uh, he was awarded Nobel Prize in the year 2016 in physiology or medicine. And um, in his work in the breakthrough work discoveries on the mechanism of autophagy. So actually, the big question is to uh, is is how uh, do we have to eat all the time? Uh, some people were thought that uh, skipping meals was bad, but others believe that uh, eating we have to eat six times a day. So there is a lot of confusion that how much we have to eat and how often we should eat. Actually, the truth is that many of our cells are in dis disparate need of autophagy. So if is, autophagy is not happening properly, uh, the, in your cells, they will get cluttered with garbage. And this is like a kind of dirty room, which you see in the figure, and uh, which is cluttered with cloths and objects everywhere. This can lead to fatigue, brain fog, bloating, skin blemishes, fatty liver, 
insulin resistance and inflammation. So OTOPG is like a uh, like activating screw, activating group that helps to clean up the yourselves. It can turn on the clean uh, machine. It can turn the clean machine. Uh, sorry, it can turn the uh, machine room into a clean room. And actually, we feel better when you are in a clean environment. Similarly, when the cells are clean, you feel more energy, and you will have the less symptom of inflammation. Uh, we lose weight, mental sharpness, glowing skin, and increased lifespan. So inside our cells, we have got a mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of the cell. So autophagy allows the mitochondria to clean up the, all the reactive oxygen species and free radicals, which makes the uh, damage the cell and making them more efficient in generating the energy. So another amazing effect is that autophagy shuts down the insulin. The insulin resistance is one of the most growing problem in our country. So these insulin resistance people have got these insulin resistance uh, patients have high levels of fasting insulin. This, pro this process triggers a viscous cycle of hunger, fat storage, and weight gain and inflammation. It, it, the cycles goes on. So the autophagy helps in the have a fantastic role in the insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. So in case of sluggish autophagy, it can lead to heart disease, diabetes, fatty liver, cancer, neurodegenerative disorders, autoimmune disease, mood disorders, skin disease, chronic inf infections, and aging. So prolonged fasting induces the autophagy. Studies have shown that the evidence of autophagy was seen after 24 hours of fasting, which starts to peak around 48 hours of fasting. Uh, we have got uh, different types of uh, intermittent fasting pattern, uh, which include time-restricted eating, the 5 to 2 diet, eat, stop diet, eat, eat stop, eat, uh, alternate day fasting, the warrior diet. So coming to the key points, uh, autophagy is a self-eating and or cleanup at the cellular level. You can activate autophagy through fasting. Autophagy can help to lose weight, reduce inflammation, and live longer. You have to listen to your body, find out your ideal fasting input. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, nice lecture about autophagy. Sir, Samasegar, sir. Somasegar, sir. Gunasing, sir. Gunasing, sir. Mm. Any questions from the audience? Madam can explain. Audience can ask the questions if any on autophagy. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you hear me? Good evening, sir. Are you here, Dr. Raj Kumar? Yeah. So I just have one question, sir, madam. Uh, are, there drugs, are, are there any drugs which can pass an autophagy? Is there any any pharmaceutical uh, intervention which can trigger so autophagy? Far, Actually, no drugs have been discovered so far for speeding up the autophagy, sir. Okay. Raj Kumar. Yeah, so long, sir. Can you proceed with your lecture now? Sir is uh, not available, it seems passing, sir. Can you start your yeah, yeah, yeah. talk? Yeah, yeah, Please no, no. proceed. Yeah, but... Sir, so long. You can't wait. I'm not sure what you're doing. I'm not sure what you're doing. Okay, Raj Kumar, start. Yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. 
good evening to everyone i first of all i would like to thank dr professor guna singh uh, for giving me this opportunity to share whatever i have uh, learned over the past few years following the fasting and uh, other low carb uh, protocols so uh, good evening to everyone a lot of uh, stalwarts of pediatrics here my teachers teachers are there good evening to everyone uh, so uh, my topic is is there any evidence uh, for intermittent fasting the benefits of intermittent fasting uh madam as biochemistry madam and pathology both have actually um, summarized all the factors and all the benefits uh, most of what i would like to, i would uh, like to cover so anyway we'll just go through an evidence from an evolutionary perspective and some historical context and um, some religious aspects and then some of the studies and uh, and we'll conclude with that so basically uh Uh, actually there uh, the number one evidence for inter any fasting every fasting this thing in which we are, how we were evolved as humans so we were fasting feasting we never had adequate food only the all this uh, um availability of large large amounts of food large amount of choices in the past 50 70 years so we have evolved by mostly by uh, fasting occasional occasional feasting and mostly fasting which is which is uh, as hunter gathers which has helped us to our brains performing at optimal levels as madam told it, it was mainly due to the metabolic switch from glucose to fatty acids and ketones the fatty acids as and ketone bodies have actually helped us evolve to proper human beings enne host aagi kodupa na ipo veliye vande current la veerchi so the human metabolic response to fasting has occupied a necessary role in our survival over the past few million years so the ability to function at the high level both physically and mentally during extended periods without food may have been our fundamental importance in our evolutionary history so again the metabolic switch has helped us evolve as proper human beings and there are historically also this um, uh, hippocrates the father of medicine he has advocated in his uh, uh, one meal a day for obese people in ancient greek uh, greek history and he has uh, also told that instead of using medicine better fast today and fasting to be a natural remedy for illness in olden times so uh, paracelsus is the founder of toxicology and he is a uh, german swiss uh, 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 doctor physician in uh, 15th century he has told fasting is the greatest remedy the physician could take so the best of all medicine is resting and fasting by benjamin franklin who is another great scientist and uh, and a pioneer pioneer in lot of fields and mark twain has told a little starvation can really do more for the average sick man than the best of medicine and doctors so uh, religion um, we have a very very good evidence of intermittent fasting in, uh, in the month of ramzan and fasting where muslims they fast for a month they eat from uh, from sunrise to sunset with almost 14 hours they they fast so it's a classic example of intermittent fasting from dawn to sunset for four consecutive weeks it has proven metabolic benefits i want to quote this study based on uh, this ramadan uh, fasting so intermittent fasting from dawn to sunset for four consecutive weeks induces anti cancer proteum response and improves metabolic syndrome by uh, mustafa and the team so this four week intermittent fasting from dawn to sunset for more than 14 hours a day contributed to the anti carcinogenesis dna repair insulin signaling and increased longevity in subjects with metabolic syndrome So there is another study of the effectiveness of early time restricted eating for weight loss fat loss and cardio metabolic health a randomized controlled trial by Humer and uh, his her team in uh, JAMA so that was a 14 week parallel um, randomized control study participants were adults age 25 to 70 years with obesity they they practiced early time restricted eating that is the early part of the day so as the tara told and we have discussed in our intermittent fast group uh, intermittent fasting and uh, time restricted eating in the early part of the day as Uh, more benefits than uh, taking your eating window to the later part of the day so it's about an 8 hour eating window from 5 of uh, 7 to 3 o'clock the co primary outcomes were weight loss and fat loss secondary outcomes included uh, improved uh, bp uh, blood pressure heart rate glucose levels insulin and plasma lipid levels so another study is impact of intermittent fasting on health and disease process from the aging um, 
review journal by Mark P. Madsen and Walter Lee Longo. So Mark Madsen and Walter Longo are uh, their giants and they are pioneers in intermittent fasting research for the past 30 years. Actually, Mark Madsen is, uh, is known as the father of intermittent fasting. He has a textbook after him. Mm -hmm. So when we study the cellular and molecular mechanisms by which IF improves health and counteract disease process, involve activation of adaptive cellular stress response signaling pathways that enhance mitochondrial health, DNA repair, and autophagy. Mm -hmm. Promotes stem cell based regeneration as well as, well as long lasting metabolic effects. Mm -hmm. So, same, same study, so it's a overall pictorial uh, uh, mm -hmm. description of what happens in that study. So, increased parasympathetic tone and uh, as a pathology from the biogenesis, Madam told, uh, the ketone bodies and adiponectin, adiponectin are the main factors which has all the beneficial effects. Increase insulin sensitivity and ketone bodies and liver. And increase insulin sensitivity on group subtake in by muscle and fatty acid mobilization from the adipocytes and uh, various benefits in the brain. So, another uh, study is intermittent periodic fasting, longevity, and disease from, uh, from the Journal of Natural Nature and Aging by Walter Longo and Mark Madsen. So, intermittent fasting lasting from 12 to 14, 48 hours and repeated every 1 to 7 days. And periodic fasting lasting 2 to 7 days and repeated once per month or less have the potential and to prevent and treat disease. So, this study examined the therapeutic potential and side effects of IF and PF with a focus on cancer, autoimmunity, neurodegeneration, and metabolic and cardio. So, this is another study on meal frequency and timing in health and disease by Mark Madsen and uh, Sachin Tanda. Sachin Tanda is an Indian American who has done revolutionary studies and revolutionary research in uh, intermittent fasting. So, you can follow him. So the most common eating pattern in modern societies, three meals plus uh, snacks a day, is abnormal from an evolutionary perspective. We have evolved from a fasting feasting cycle. Now, the past uh, uh, 50 to 70 years, we have been uh, uh, we have access to a lot of processed and tasty food, which has resulted in overeating. So, emerging scientists studies of animal models and human suggest that IE or that is important energy restriction of periods as little as 16 hours can improve health indicators and counteract disease process. So, the, as uh, the previous speakers told, the main metabolic effects are due to the metabolic shift from fat metabolism and ketone, the predominantly glucose metabolism, and the repair autophagy and repair, uh, repair mechanism. So, when humans switch from eating three full meals to IER, such as one meal, moderate size meal every other day, or only 500 to 600 calories two days per week, they exhibit robust changes in energy metabolism, characterized by increase in insulin, reduce insulin appreciation of fatty acid, and elevation of ketone levels. So the same study uh, observed in obese women who changed the diet from multiple daily to alternate day energy restriction exhibited significant reductions of levels of circulating uh, TNF and IL-6, which are uh, 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 inflammatory markers. In asthma patients, the two months of alternate energy restriction reduced circulating TNF and markers of stress and improves the symptoms and airway resistance. IER and fasting inhibits and even reverses the growth of a range of tumors, including neuroblastoma, breast and ovarian cancers. The effect is very marked in neuroblastoma. The shift to ketogenesis may play an important role in suppression of tumor growth by IER fasting because many tumor cells are largely dependent on glycolysis and glucose for their uh, energy needs and growth. So they are unable to use ketones as an energy source. This is a continuous of the same study. So what about the previous speaker told? So liver glycogen stores are depleted in uh, 10 to 12 hours, then for the fatty acid mobilized from liver to produce production of ketone bodies, which is taken up by muscle and brain, where there is uh, energy, uh, neuronal energy is uh, ATP produced for better cognition, various benefits of the brain and cognition. So another study is effect of intermittent or continuous energy restriction on weight loss and metabolic disease risk markers, the RCT in young overweight, it's international of KCT. So this study compared the feasibility and effectiveness of intermittent continuous energy with continuous calorie, calorie restriction for weight loss in sensitivity and other metabolic factors. So intermittent energy restriction was yeah, as effective as uh, overall calorie restriction with regard to weight loss, insulin sensitivity, and other health biomarkers. And it may be offered as an alternative equivalent to continuous energy restriction for weight loss and reducing disease. So this is another uh, 
overall uh, chart of whatever you have discussed so far uh, another study from by uh, Luigi Fontana and Peter Patrick in the volume of uh, journal cell the same thing get the body increase mitochondrial mitochondrial function cell repair autophagy uh, resulting in better health span and longevity so this is a landmark study published in new england journal of medicine 2019 where in effects of intermittent fasting on healthy aging and disease uh, was studied by that same team mark madsen um, so this so this is a pictorial description of uh, the met metabolic adaptations to intermittent fasting and the uh, uh, various effects on uh, due to metabolic switching and uh, the uh, underlying and the improved organ function resistance to stress and stress mechanism cellular and molecular mechanisms so this study has observed in multi center study showing the daily calories plus many cardio metabolic factors in non obese people furthermore the same study um, uh, found out that six short term studies involving overweight and obese adults have shown that the intermittent fasting is as effective for weight loss as standard diets so two recent studies showed that calorie restriction are for for three intermittent fasting that is 24 hour fasting three times a week reverse in patients pre diabetes or type 2 diabetes i intermittent fasting it puts multiple indicators of cardiovascular health in animals humans including a uh, resting heart rate uh, increase increase the hdl and uh, decrease in ldl and uh, most of other hormonal uh, improvement so it has reduced markers of systemic inflammation and oxidative stress process atherosclerosis So I have to start to impair energy metabolism in cancer cells, as we discussed previously, because the cancer cells are unable to use uh, unable to use ketone bodies for their uh, for their growth. And several case studies involved uh, especially high blood pressure patients that did IF cancer plus tumor growth and extended survey. So two recent pilot studies showed that patients with multiple adhere to IF regimen to reduce symptoms in as short as period of two months. Because it, it reduces inflammation, it would be expected to be beneficial to prevent arthritis and other autoimmune diseases. Reason and arthritis. So finally, uh, as uh, the group of uh, fasting, yes, and contents, fears, forget them. Advantages so many. Schedule whenever you need it and therapy fast for so many health conditions like obesity, diabetes, cancer, and diseases. And uh, I want to put this from yes, and contents guide of fasting. Fasting is not about starving yourself and then right. Incredibly effective therapeutic approach. That produces amazing results regardless of any diet plan. And finally, uh, uh, apart from all these evidences, uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. We are all uh, standing examples, and many of our friends in the group are standing examples of uh, our personal uh, personal improvement or an example of the uh, tremendous uh, success of intermittent fasting. So we are the standing evidence for uh, intermittent fasting, apart from all this uh, research and the historical testing. Thank you, sir. okay okay thank you rajmar for your uh, lucid presentation you know the karagaran satham varudilla is it audio okay yes sir yes, okay sir no problem okay is uh, ppt visible yes sir sir ella mute panni vidrunga sir ha ella ri mute panni vidrunga sir adha disturbance sir adha paakara mute all potaachi mute all okay is it uh, okay right sir you can start sir yeah yeah so uh, thank you once again iap tnsc and also iap tirunamalai district branch so <clears throat> once again i am uh, indebted to our uh, branch for giving all this support dr tamilmani dr uh, uh, prabhagar and satish and other dr karna the senior people 
Okay. So it's all started about August 21st. We had an IMA meeting in Thiruvannamalai where uh, Dr. SBS also invited. Actually, it is for SBS only. So we want to add some more topics so that the IMA people also will come. So I uh, started uh, preparing on secrets of weight loss. So during my preparation, I found a lot of evidence for, um, uh, for intermittent fasting. Actually, I was practicing paleo diet about three years back when I was in uh, SRM because I got serious severe joint pain that time we wanted to reduce. Then finally, I practiced paleo diet and I reduced some weight, six, seven kilos and pain has gone. But I couldn't follow paleo diet. It's very difficult. But this time, just to, before going to talk, I just want to experience what is intermittent fasting. I started with 16 to 18 hours, about a week. Then I gave talk during that uh, meeting. Then I just, uh, it was so wonderful. I never felt any craving, anything. Then I told my friend, I mean, President Dr. Tamilmani also once, Sir, he said initially, no, no, not possible. Then after a few days, when I met, we were going together. He said he is uh, starting uh, 12 hours fasting initially. Then after three months, so before he was uh, 100 kilo. Then after three months, when I met him, he lost. Sir, not audible. Sir, not audible, sir. Both your audio and video has gone. You may see you are disconnected. I think power problem again. Sir, you can ask uh, Dr. SBS to talk, sir. Yes, sir. Then, uh, uh, sir. You know, then uh, Gunasin can uh, do it no later. No problem. I have you no issues. I can start as oh, oh. sir. Yes, sir. SBS, SBS sir, SBS needs no introduction. Uh, sir, can yeah, yeah. Uh, start? Yeah, yeah. Everybody is eagerly waiting to hear okay. SBS, sir. Okay. okay. But I'll, okay. Allow, me to, allow me to share the screen. Please allow me to share the screen. Admin, please uh, make Sarah's course. I'm disabled. Please allow me to share this. Yeah, yes, yes. Sir, yeah, no problem. I'll do it. I'll do it. Please allow, please allow me to share the screen. I'm not allowed to share the screen yet. Sir, Tirumurgan, Tirumurgan. Sir, please mute all. Admin, please mute, mute all. Sir, last part, sir, the host are there, sir. Our the man now. Yar, yar. Last part, sir. Rajkumar, Rajkumar, please coordinate. Please mute all and unmute. Uh, uh, sir, SBS, sir. No, I'm, 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 I'm muted, but I'm not able to share the screen. Sir, as I said, sir, you have to post up another one, sir. I'm not sure. Raj Kumar, 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 Okay, am I visible and audible? Yes, sir. Please proceed, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, at the outset, I thank uh, Professor Guna Singh for the unique opportunity to take part in this uh, wonderful 
a CME. Uh, my job is actually very difficult. It is very easy for me to talk on clinical topics, but this topic is uh, rather unique. And uh, I was I requested Dr. Guna Singh to allow me to take the challenge of doing something on this. At the outset, I have an honest submission. I am not a dietitian. I am not a specialist in nutrition. I am not a nutritionist. And whatever contents that are there in the PowerPoint presentation I have made, most of them don't have peer-reviewed references. When we talk in so many pediatric CME, we always give references. I am unable to give references for many of the statements I am going to make. Unfortunately, no rigid guidelines are available in this topic. It's a new topic which is evolving slowly all over the world. My job is to only share the concepts, some of the concepts which are available in the public domain, in literature, in the PubMed, and in the Google. First of all, you will know what is fasting. Basically, it is nothing but the voluntary practice of partially or completely abstaining from caloric foods and beverages, not taking anything which contains calories. That is the definition of fasting. And uh, the method of fasting varies from place to place, individual to individual. The methods depend on the calories, their type and amount which are consumed, the time period during which calories are consumed, the duration of the fasting and the rationale behind it. Although there are so many types of intermittent fasting, the main concept of inducing a fasting state, the basic principle is similar. You know, like uh, uh, you, know, you take religions. Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Sikhism, Jainism, so many religions are there. But if you take the basic fundamental principles in almost all the religions, it is almost very, very similar. The way, the way they do it only is different. So what are intermittent fasting method that you adopt? The aim is to lose weight and be healthy. The methods may vary. It's like almost all the religions telling you to be good to everybody. So in intermittent fasting, you want to be good to your body. Before we start talking about the different types of intermittent fasting, we have to bust some myths in nutrition. The first myth that should be busted is breakfast is essential. In fact, we have been told for several decades by physicians, by dietitians, by nutritionists, by companies which manufacture cereals, that eating breakfast is something which you have to do. If you want to be healthy, you have to have your breakfast. First, break the fast in the morning. Boost your metabolism. That's an absolutely wrong concept. This is now well accepted that breakfast is not at all essential for a healthy human being. That is a new concept. In fact, breakfast concept is a concept which is beneficial to five-star hotels, which give you everything to eat in the morning, and to manufacturers of cereal foods. That is myth number one which should be thrown off. Myth number two, people tend to believe that if you eat after 6 p.m. carbohydrates, it will lead to immediate fat gain. Absolutely not. It's not after 6 p.m. Anytime if you eat a lot of carbohydrates, it will lead to fat gain. It's not necessarily after 6 p.m. Third is, if you want to have a good fast metabolism, you have to have small, frequent meals across the day. These are all myths which should be busted. All these are not acceptable in science today. Having talked about the basis, let us move on to different types of intermittent fasting. Look at the merits 
demerits of each one of them. 12 hour or overnight fasting. So this is something which is very, very easy to follow. Even if one is not interested in losing weight, one is not interested in stimulating autophagy, if you want to behave normally as a human being and remain healthy without much of disease, and you don't want to increase the risk of diabetes mellitus, simple 12 hour or overnight fasting is all that is required. It's a beginner version. It's, an, it's, it's a kindergarten version for anybody who wants to try intermittent fasting. Okay, you fast for 12 hours. And you simply fast for a short period before getting to bed and after waking up. You can eat typically three meals, what we normally take, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It may look like a normal eating schedule, but most importantly, you should avoid snacking. There is no point in saying that I fast for 12 hours. In the remaining 12 hours, I eat biscuits, I eat all munch things, etc lots of calories, sugar, alcohol, etc. That's not going to be helpful. And who should practice this? A beginner. Somebody who is listening to the CME today, tomorrow itself they can start. Well, over. After the CME is over, you can have dinner. Don't take anything till 8 a.m. 8 in the morning. This is the basic, right? And if people think that they don't have much weight to lose, but still want to remain healthy, they can try this. The greatest advantages of this 12-hour fasting method is that it is suitable to us. It, it coincides with what we have been doing so far, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And definitely even in even though it may not do great wonders, it improves the overall health of the individual. Definitely decrease the risk of diabetes. Next, a little more difficult, 14-10 fasting. 14 hours of fasting and 10 hours of eating. Just to give you an example, you have your dinner at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the night. And then till 10 a.m. the next morning, 10 a.m. the next morning. 14 hours, you try to fast. And you can take two or three meals during the eating window. If you take three meals, you have to meet them, move them close together. Two meals, you can have a long break. Again, recommended for beginners, women. Women always struggle to cope with the longer fasting periods than men. So they can start doing it. They can start doing it. Main benefit, very simple, easy to implement. You can start tomorrow. And it does help in weight loss, though not to a great extent. So easy ones. Basically, intermittent fasting methods consist of a fasting window. That fasting window should preferably be before 12 p.m. and should start probably from 7 p.m or uh, uh, 8 p.m. And then after 8 p.m., you should go to sleep and there should be a fasting window. The third one, 16-8 fasting, 16-8 fasting. That is, you fast for 16 hours, you sleep for eight hours, okay? And during the waking hours, another eight hours, you fast. So 8 plus 8, 16 hours fasting, 8 hours is the window period during which you eat. This is one method which is most popular across the world. It's not very difficult at all. You can lose weight, your insulin resistance will increase, you can decrease inflammation, and you can maintain the muscle mass. And uh, as already mentioned in the previous lecture, if you fast for about 16 hours, autophagy is expected to start cell repair, cleaning. You start taking place if you fast for 16 hours. That's another great advantage. And it is recommended for beginners and people 
with some fasting experience. In fact, this is the method I follow for the last, say, nine months from June uh, 2022 onwards. I've been using this with a weight loss of 4.5 kg. And I'm not obese, nor am I overweight, but still I'm following this to keep myself fit. It does facilitate weight loss. It improves their insulin resistance. In my case, the HPA1C from 6.8 has come to 5.8. I want to bring it to 5, 5 if possible. And it does promote autophagy. The next method, 18 hours fasting and six hours window period for eating. Very difficult, not easy for somebody who is working. The greatest advantage is that during six hours, during six hours, you can't can you mute? Can you mute, please? Yeah. In six hours, you can't eat much. You can't eat much in six hours. At the most, you can take two or three feeds. Fasting with 10 hour window period. Easier than the 18, 6 or 16, 8. And it is one of the easiest methods to follow. And next is OMAD. What is OMAD? One meal a day. Single meal, single meal. In fact, many you know, religious leaders, religious leaders are known to follow this. We are all aware of the Saint Shankaracharya of the Kanchi Mat, the, the Chandrasekara Saraswati, who lived beyond 100 years. I believe he used to live only on one meal a day for nearly two, three decades. And that meal also, I believe, it contained only milk. Oh, and, yeah, one meal a day. Please, please un unmute yourself. And the three, meal... Three to four. Three to four. Okay. One meal a day. One three meal a day. Hello? Yeah. Sir, you unmute me. SBS, sir. Matongla unmute Panita. Ninga unmute Panigna. Hello, sir. Unmute Panaga. Sir? Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, Can you yeah, hear me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. The the one minute. Yeah. So this one meal a day was practiced by the pontiff of the Anchi Mat for over three decades. He used to live only on milk and puffed rice, puri. That's all. Occasional leafy vegetables or banana. 30 years, he never had any metabolic problems. And this is called WOMAD or warrior diet. Look at the person here. You know, now in Ukraine, there's a war going on. Most of the soldiers are taking food only once a day. You eat only once a day and mostly at dinner. And you achieve a fasting time of around 23 hours. This should be done only by people with some experience, like Guna Singh. People with a busy schedule, very difficult to practice. Wonderfully, it promotes autophagy and enables ketosis, excellent tool for weight loss. Next is eat, stop, eat. What is that? You fast for 24 hours, eat one meal, fast for 24 hours. Is you can do it once or twice a week instead of every day. You don't have to do every day for like Walmart diet. Here again, people should have experience. People who don't want to fast every day can do this. Excellent benefits are there. Next method, alternate days fasting. That is, you nearly fast for about 36 hours from one breakfast to one and a half days. It's a very, very effective method. You can modify it by eating less on the next day. Take only a 500 calorie meal on the fasting day. Eat normally on the eating days and fast for a day, alternate. And here, again, people should have experience. You can definitely lose weight. You can reverse diabetes. If somebody has an HbA1c of 7, 8, you can try it with permission from your physician. Excellent method to lose weight. Next is five is to two fasting. That is you fast only for two non-consecutive days per week and eat normally for five days. Very difficult for professionals to do this. 
But even on those two days, you can eat 500 to 600 calories on those fast, fasting days to make life easier. You look at the schedule here. Day one, you take 2,000 calories. Day two, you take 2,000. You take only 500. Three and four, you take 2,000 calories. Day five, again, you take only 500. Day five, six and seven, you eat normally. So this is five is to two fasting. Again, not very easy, but the benefits are tremendous. The other method is you don't follow any method, any fixed method, intuitive, intermittent fasting or spontaneous skipping. Whenever you feel like you simply stop eating, 12 hours, 24 hours like that. Okay, Mahatma Gandhi used to do it. Whenever there was a problem, he used to simply go on fast. This is intuitive intermittent fasting. The next most difficult type of fasting, extended or prolonged intermittent fasting, 48 hours, you don't take anything except water. That's not very easy for professionals like us to do it. And there are several other methods which include 13 hours a day fasting, 24 version, Mix and match, one day you take 16, 8, one day you take uh, 10, 14, one day you take 12, 10. You can have a mixture of everything. And the most recent concept which is now being propagated is circadian rhythm fasting. In fact, the best benefits of fasting are likely to accrue to the human being if the fasting is done between you know, 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. Because that follows the circadian rhythm. You should finish it all your eating by 6 p.m. Stop eating and start eating the next morning, 8 a.m. This is called circadian rhythm fasting. And it is definitely beneficial in reducing intake, reducing appetite, improved metabolism, improving weight loss, reduce body fat, hypertension is corrected, cholesterol is corrected, fasting insulin levels are lowered. Blood glucose is lowered, insulin resistance is improved. But the biggest problem for somebody like me who's trying intermittent fasting is hunger. You cannot suppress hunger. We are not Swamiji's. Very difficult. What do you do? There are several methods. What I will do, I will tell you. Lemon juice. Lemon juice. Since I'm not a hypertensive, I take good lemon juice with ice. A little bit of mint leaves with salt. With salt. No honey, no sugar is added. I put a few ice cubes, almost like in you know, a cocktail. I drink it slowly, keep it frozen, and I drink it. Maybe around 300 ml over a period of 15 to 20 minutes in sips. This is the best way I conquer hunger during my 16-8 fasting methods. In the end, we should remember as an individual, you should choose your eating window timing. You can choose 16, 8, 14, 10, 12, 12. Please choose your own method. No single eating window can be recommended for everybody. Please don't have a rigid schedule. It causes mental stress. Change it like change of dress. Right? You can choose any combination of fasting and feasting and change them to avoid boredom. In fact, medical research has shown that keeping your body guessing may prevent metabolic adaptation. Sticking to a rigid schedule is less beneficial than a varied schedule. But then the best eating window for you is the one that can, you can make a lifestyle. To sum up, some salient points must be remembered. We should choose the appropriate regimen. We should control late night eating episodes. We should have a controlled eating approach during non-feasting periods. Minimum 12-hour window is required for fasting. We should be aware of boundaries and restrictions. And we should drink plenty of water or maybe lemon tea, herbal tea, decaffeinated coffee, etc. And occasionally, of course, black coffee, one or two cups, not really harmful without sugar. And of course, add a healthy fat. And we should divide as an appropriate workout regimen, which may be cycling, which may be running, which may be in a gym, which may be a treadmill, which may be simple walking. We should listen to our body and we should continue to maintain the status of the journey and not stop intermittent fasting. Several methods are there. Methods with the short fasting period are well suited for beginners. Longer fasting periods you can try after a few months. 
finally, if there is a will, there is a way. Raman, Rama had a will. So he could win the war against Ravana. If there is a will, there is a way. We can try and succeed. Thank you very much. If there is any feedback, please mail me. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, sorry. I think Ramesh Babu. So long, sir. I think uh, people started uh, blaming all ills because of the intermittent fasting. I think <laughs> there is a because there is a because there is a current cut here. Maybe because uh, because of intermittent fasting. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I will so these already. Uh, Again, you are lost. Your audio is gone, sir. Again, you are lost. Yes, sir. Wonderful, sir. <laughs> Whatever topic you are talking, it is very scientific and really, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you for your Uh, Ramesh, sir, you can allow question and answer system or you can proceed. Kuna Singh, sir, can talk at the end. But Ramesh? Prasanna, you go ahead. Yes, sir. Can you, uh, can you, I'm, I'm uh, audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, Prasanna, you are very much audible. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me, sir? Sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, Thank you for uh, Gunasing sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Gunasing sir uh, is like uh, uh, everybody says, sir, uh, is a friend, a philosopher, and guide for everybody. Wherever he goes, uh, he becomes a friend, a philosopher, and a guide. Uh, can you see my screen, sir? Not yet. One minute, sir. Sir, can you give me permission to share the screen, sir? Dr. Guna Singh, you have to you have to permit Prasanna to present. Share the screen. Prasanna, the hosts have to permit you to share. Oh, one second, sir. Now I can share, I think. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you see the screen, sir, now? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. proceed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, like uh, I said, Guna uh, Singh, sir, becomes a friend, a philosopher, and guide for everybody wherever he goes. Wherever uh, uh, he, he goes, he, he takes everybody along with him. So that is the best character with uh, Dr. Guna Singh, sir. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, he has given me this opportunity uh, to talk uh, among this August gathering. Uh, I thank IAP Tiruvannamalai and I thank IAP Tamil Nadu State Chapter. Uh, I, I am very, very honored and uh, humbled to be with my mentor and uh, my uh, professor, Dr. SBS sir, here. Uh, I also thank Dr. Somashekar sir, uh, Dr. Suresh Balan sir, Dr. Tirumurugan Sarin sir, and our uh, honorable past president, Dr. Ramesh Babu sir. I thank uh, the vibrant uh, Tiruvannamalai uh, IAP Chapter, Dr. Tamil Mani, Dr. Uh, uh, Prabhakaran sir and Dr. Satish Kumar sir. With this outset, uh, I will start my talk. Uh, my talk is uh, 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 one of the uh, very uh, uh, commonly asked questions. I, I think uh, all the chat people 
could have asked uh, what is uh, happening to me why i am not able to reduce in spite of i am doing intermittent fasting so i'll just go into my talk uh, i will be looking at the reasons why if is not working uh, some solutions for that and some diet charts and the key takeaways as uh, my mentor dr sb sir already put that i am also uh, the disclaimer is i am also not an expert i am a practitioner uh, i have lost a significant amount of weight uh, by practicing if uh, instead of telling practicing if i should tell that uh, uh, i practiced healthy healthy eating so let us see the reasons why intermittent fasting is not working one by one okay so the most important reason that i feel is eating too many calories in the eating window so people say uh, sir na i started intermittent fasting okay i will start uh, losing weight they think so and then what they do is in the eating window they will uh, go and have a kfc chicken so when they start eating too much calories in the eating window they may not be able to lose the weight so write yourself a meal plan a meal plan is compulsory must you have to write yourself a meal plan and during your eating window you have to eat mindfully you have to calibrate your portion size how do you want to calibrate your portion size what my wife does is uh, she has a weighing scale at the home uh, uh, and she calibrates the uh, uh, portion sizes by dry weight of the food she uh, weighs the food and then she cooks the food and daily she writes the meal plan and she calibrates so that's how we do it in our house we calibrate our portion size and that's how you can uh, uh, do it in the mindfully way and you, you can even find small places where you could save little if you are in the window you are having one teaspoon of sugar then make it quarter teaspoon Uh, and all this will try to achieve a calorie deficit once you achieve calorie deficit then only you will start losing inches or your weight so that is the most important thing next one is you are not taking high quality nutrition in your eating window so if you have started intermittent fasting and you are taking a lot of junk a processed food then you may not be able to lose weight so it is not only about when you eat it is what you eat you have to eat a lot of lean proteins if you are a non vegetarian take a lot of lean lean protein if you are a vegetarian don't worry you have lot of protein options you you can eat paneer you can eat soya you can eat lot of chickpeas you you have whole grains with the proteins uh, you can eat buckwheat whole wheat and then you can eat uh, um quinoa quinoa has lot of uh, proteins you can eat nat natively available millets like ragi and then you can eat vegetable fruit even in vegetable and fruits select vegetables and fruits which have lot of proteins like you can eat uh, uh, avocado you can eat uh, uh, um, uh, your uh, cauliflower and you can eat broccoli you you will have a lot of protein in that you should also eat a significant amount of calcium rich food and healthy fats no ultra processed food no refined carbs and no unhealthy fats eat only healthy fats remember preparing meal for if is the key you have to start preparing for the whole week in advance just naaliki na kaalaila if panna pora mudiyad it is very very difficult you have to prepare your meal write down a meal plan and then start buying things you you can get all these things in online shop locally available shop you have to start buying things store it up prepare your meals write down your meals and then you start your if i i'm sure it will help you as i said there is if if you don't have enough protein uh, you will feel hunger you will feel the uh, you will not have the feeling of fullness okay so your protein will increase your metabolic rate it will preserve your muscle and lose your fat uh, uh, like the uh, uh, pathologist and the biochemistry Uh, madam has already told it will preserve your muscle it will not degrade your muscle so aim to get at least a portion of protein in every meal your target should be 0.1 to 1 gram per kg per day if you don't remember this uh, remember akshay akshay kana he comes daily in the horlicks ad he says 1 gram per kg 1 gram per kg take 1 gram per kg per day then you you will feel full 
you you will not crave you don't have hunger and then your feeling craving for carbohydrates will decrease next one is eating too many processed food uh, my uh, message is do not eat anything from a closed packet do not buy anything from a packet because if you have to store it in a packet you have to have salt sugar or some preservative so don't buy anything from packets prepare food at home then you will start losing weight so as sps have said if you want to lose weight uh, you can start doing it from uh, day one today so what you have to do is you have to start cleansing yourself uh, by i put this word cleansing because you you have taken we, we, a beginner has taken a lot of junk means he has taken a lot of sweets he has taken a lot of processed food so what he should tell do is he should write a meal plan and start cleansing he should have significant um, an amount of carbohydrates and significant amount of proteins with, with a uh, lot of salads okay so i have given you some meal plan uh, i can share it in the group also uh, so you should uh, have such a written meal plan uh, where you can see we have uh, given you a lot of uh, uh, millets like quinoa dosa brown rice brown, uh, uh, ragi roti like all these things you you prepare your meal plan cleans yourself for at least two weeks start from uh, 12 by 12 is to 12 uh, cycle Uh, prepare for two weeks then you go to your uh, major plan this is for the beginners and uh, as sbs have said uh, there is lot of hidden calories in drinks so please do avoid sports drinks uh, do not take organic juice i am taking a lot of uh, orange juice with the sugar doctor what is there in the juice no that also contains lot of sugar and juice has no fiber at all when you eat pulp then only you will get pulp they don't you get fiber so juice has no fiber at all so please take as a whole fruit then uh, even in drinking coffee uh, can i take one cup of coffee no you take coffee with milk coffee with sugar has a lot of hidden calories in that so all these have calories sugars and fats please avoid all this i request everybody to Attention. Then the next uh, uh, reason why we are not losing enough weight is we are not drinking enough water. So drinking more water can help you by you will eat less, you will feel fuller, your hunger will be curbed if you take enough water. I advise at least four liters for uh, adults per twenty four hours. So that will help your metabolism. Uh, drink a, a lot of water then that will uh, help you in your ketosis everything next slide as as uh, sb sir said uh, he is sir said a lot of uh, 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 meal plan uh, i tried this plan because i had some uh, uh, stagnation of weight at some point so i wanted to lose more weight so what i did is i did carb cycling what i did is i took one day carb and the next day only protein so i did this on even days a lot of proteins no carbs and on odd days i had a lot of uh, uh, carbohydrates with some protein also so i did this carb cycling at 16 8 and uh, uh, after starting carb cycling i had another 3 or 4 kg of weight loss so if you are stagnated at 2 or 3 kg in the beginning then you can try uh, several diets that sir said you you may not have get a fixed uh, uh, result from a fixed diet you have to try uh, what suits your body so you can try carb cycling like this by maintaining an odd even day or you can even do something like this uh, you can start one day low carb one day medium carb and one day high carb then the next day no carb like that you can do uh, but remember do not ignore carbs you should have carbs which in fact has high fibers like carbs like uh, uh, your brown rice which has high fibers or quinoa or buckwheat most important thing choose your if time wisely uh, sbs are said best time is from 6:00 uh, in the evening to 8:00 in the morning uh, 
I I did something like that and but I failed. Why I failed is I I I am practicing in the evening. So what I did, uh, I have to see uh, some patients who, who pediatric patients to the parents. I have to talk. I have to counsel a lot. Nariya face no, rombo kasta onge ta face arde. So enna pona nariya energy salva chhe. Then I when I came home, I felt hunger and I I my my I failed. So what I did is, I I had my last meal at eight o'clock in the evening in my clinic. so then i had my next meal at 12 o'clock in the morning so that be, that was my window so you can choose your time wisely in your eating time you should work if you do that then uh, your your chances of uh, quitting the if is decrease and uh, uh, for somebody says that uh, my, uh, my my weight is not reducing uh, what is the reason your fasts are too short so you should not do it too fast short uh, or also remember you should not rush in your fasting so you start as as fps uh, said you start at 12 by 12 and then you slowly increase every week you can increase one hour uh, group la vandu guna singh sir 24 hours fasting podraaru 48 hours fasting podraaru enna ipdi pandra nammalo jump panni nera 48 hours pona na it is very very difficult our he has reached the jnani level so we are now beginners so we should start at 12 by 12 then aim to achieve i think i feel most of the uh, beginners the sweet spot will be around 16 uh, 8 so you try to achieve this sweet, sweet spot and do not rush to this spot immediately so take your time then i think you you will not uh, 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 fall down from i up and as madam said uh, this leptin and uh, ghrelin is very important so uh, you should have a good sleep so if you if you, eat, if you don't sleep then you will feel more hunger so this this dysregulation happens and you will your i up fails okay so uh, have a good sleep and uh, remember one thing you may not be initially losing weight namalukku weight lose agade but ana we will be losing fat so uh, it, it it may not show up in your scale but it can you you may be in fact actually benefiting from if so what should you do so before you start if you take some measurements of your body take a, uh, both the mid arm circumferences both the forearm circumferences both the thigh circumference both the leg circumference upper chest uh, upper abdomen middle abdomen lower abdomen pelvis all these measurements you take and write it down in a chart okay after one month you see all these measurements so every month you see the measurements even if you are not losing weight you may be losing inches so that is more important you may be losing fat but not weight you may be you are eating lot of protein and you may be uh, getting benefit from that uh, most important thing so uh, i am not losing weight in the intermittent fasting what can i do okay during the eating window i can skip meals no never skip meals during the eating window eat till you are full you can even have small small meals uh, but you should not skip meals adequate amount of protein and carbohydrates rich in fibers is necessary so never skip meals in the eating window okay so what what uh, i have done all this ella paniyach va idhukku mele enala weight e koreve illa enna pandrathu okay uh, then you may need a different if plan so sit with your family uh, then uh, see what is uh, wrong in the work what is wrong in your social schedule uh, if you don't do this your if will make you hate life you should not uh, take your if to hate life so you should enjoy your if so you should sit your fa- with your family like what i did is uh, i have a separate if window my wife has a separate if window so we cook we keep it in the fridge but we have a separate schedule because i work in the evening she works in the morning so uh, i need more energy in the evening she needs more energy in the morning so which is your best fit you see what is you good for yourself never mix and match timing iniki na vandu kaalaiyila panna naalikku na vandu சாயங்காலம் பண்ணேன் அப்புறம் வந்து அடுத்த நாள் வந்து ஐஎஃப் டைம் நான் வேற டைமுக்கு மாத்திட்டேன் கிடையவே கிடையாது 
uh, if you do this uh, at a consistent time, then you will benefit. Okay. Another thing is exercising too much. What what will uh, 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 I I need result? I need result. See, uh, you, your IF is to make you healthy, not to lose your weight alone. So I need result. I need result. Don't do too much of exercise. If you do overdoing of exercise, then your consequences is you know then you you will fail IF. Okay. So if you are going to do over exercise, you will get more hunger, more cravings. So exercise, which is uh, how much is necessary for you. How much is necessary for us? Doing too little exercise also, uh, you, may, you may not lose uh, weight. For, for example, one of my postgraduate said, sir, I am walking not 10,000 steps, sir. I am walking 20,000 steps per day, sir. But I am not losing weight, sir. I am also doing IF, sir. The thing is, you have to exercise during the fasting window and preferably at the end of fasting window. End your exercise, end your fast, eat, uh, drink some water, eat after half an hour or one hour, then you will definitely benefit. And make sure you raise your heart rate to some amount. Your What is your maximum heart rate? Uh, uh, there are uh, people who are uh, elderly here. So what is your maximum heart rate? Your maximum heart rate should be 220 beats per minute minus your age. For example, if you are 35 years, your maximum heart rate should be 185. Do not go beyond, beyond your maximum heart rate. And what is your target heart rate to fat burn? Your target heart rate to fat burn is 70% of the maximum heart rate. That is, if you are a 35 year old, your maximum heart rate should only be 85 and your target heart rate should be 130. Definitely not possible. Slightly increase your heart rate. You 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 make a jog in between or one minute jog, half a minute jog. Increase your heart rate from 100 to 120. Next day, 120 to 130, like that. So achieve your target heart rate in the uh, fasting window. You will definitely lose weight. Most important for everybody here. I feel this is what is um, uh, making us fail in IF. So you should have. Uh, you are uh, you. You should have no stress during IF. Uh, you, one, in fact, if you start feeling uh, practicing IF, your stress will come down. Uh, uh, as uh, somebody already said, but don't take stress because of IS or uh, during IS. So if you do that, you may skip your exercise. Your cravings will go up. You, you will not lose. Uh, you will not have enough sleep. You lose your sleep, and you may end up falling down. So you. Remember, very, 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 very important thing is you need more time in your IF. The goal is not weight loss, but to stay healthy. So finally, I, my last slide, the key takeaways are achieve calorie deficit, achieve target protein, start slowly, and then increase your time. Cleanse before you start. Practice for balanced diet before you start. Then like it's more important than weight loss. And the last thing is exercise, drink a lot of water. And if I already said I'm not an expert, uh, you, you may get a dietitian advice, but uh, you, you can even uh, text us or type us in the group or mail us. Uh, we, we are always here to help you. Thank you. Ramesh Babu, shall I share? Yes, sir. Please proceed, sir. I don't know. The, some people are working against me. Okay, Why, sir. But, Prasanna, <laughs> no, because I am promoting intermittent fasting because it's department. For the multinationals, no? Sir, sir, department, uh, sir, uh, uh, intermittent market. fasting is working, sir. Uh, hey, could I think somebody will say intermittent fasting causes paranoia? <laughs> don't, don't. Stop sharing, Prasanna. <laughs> sir, please yeah. proceed, sir.
या या आई डोंट नो ओके ओके इन सम इंटरेस्टिंग स्टैटिस्टिक्स सो आई हर्ड फिफ्टी थ्री नॉट दिस वन some interesting this one previous one so uh, i follow nearly 80% people are following uh, intermittent fasting and uh, nearly 80% i think uh, having less than 3 months all beginners and uh, i follow intermittent following benefits to my surprise more than 50% people are following way for weight loss as well as other benefit i never thought that will happen okay okay then this is after following are you losing weight almost 75% people are losing weight 25% it's a quite big are not losing weight then how do you know about uh, is all many doctors are advising there is a surprising after i have lost weight see nearly 70% people less than 5 kilos and other 13% people more than 10 kilos and 20% people 5 to 10 kilos. it's quite uh, remarkable nada what is the important difficulty many people they say, they say craving for food that's what i i felt many people sell travel festival irritability cognitive cloudiness other thing okay and some people said constipation also one of the difficult so it's all we all know the causes of obesity is uh, junk food and ultra processed food that is the reason okay there is no we all know about it okay so many times we are sitting in front of the tv along with children we are eating 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 So the whole family become uh, obese the sitting is a biggest uh, problem now everywhere we are sitting almost children as well as ours so that lead on to lot of uh, problem okay so once the child become obese there is a 5 to 6% i mean six time there is a risk of the child become a obese adult so it is our duty to prevent obesity in children Twenty four percent of the obese children are obese where people are eating in the night. After everyone sleep, they ride the bridge and they eat everything. So these are the complications. Nearly recently, I saw one twelve year old girl with pseudo tumor cerebri. After reducing twenty five kilo, it gone with diet restriction. But after six months, once the diet restriction is over, she gained another forty kilos. so these are we already we know it's a, uh, the cardiovascular risk is there then type 2 diabetes is uh, one of the important thing once you reduce your weight your type 2 diabetes going to uh, go away so another thing is for me it given wonderful relief from my reflux past 30 years we were i was suffering and the uh, insomnia i got wonderful relief i am sleeping well and the cognitive function and the other day as somesegar said he said he is very uh, calm and very affectionate and very loving nowadays then i asked her wife over the phone so am i please is he telling the i mean pack she also agree she never agreed uh, so many years so it is uh, doing tremendous uh, benefit to all the people 
and also it uh, they say uh, obesity is uh, uh, concerned i mean connected with 13 type of cancer so most of my uh, i mean uh, started with dr jason pang okay see he says you use intermittent fast lose weight and live longer we have known forever that dieting makes you hungrier that is the thing once you calorie restrict this is a main thing you hungrier your craving increases but in intermittent fasting you are craving as well as the uh, i mean uh, you are less hungrier i i don't feel hungry at all even after 18 hours 20 hours 24 hours so eat less move more diet has a 93% failure rate at the end of one and a half to two years they are they, they regained all the weight lost so hunger calorie only if you do calorie restriction along with intermittent fasting that is okay hunger increases metabolism decreases bmr down then weight regain occurs if you do fasting hunger decreases metabolism stays stable weight loss maintain so many people think uh, exercise will reduce the weight no it is uh, like brushing your teeth is good for you and should be done every day just don't expect to lose weight okay so once we understand the obesity is a hormonal imbalance so that is what happening the insulin is very high in insulin resistance that deposit all your carbohydrate as a fat so we our effort should be taken to reduce the insulin so intermittent fasting will reduce the insulin so these are the benefits so once you lose weight you have tremendous some 15 16 benefits are there possible cancer prevention and type 2 reversal occurs i hope our uh, uh, pratap ranjit will tell about uh, type 2 diabetes reversal and anti aging because of the autophagy is uh, uh, apt the reversal of aging also can occur and insulin resistance comes down when uh, leptin resistance comes down if you do exercise during fasting window your bulk of the muscles will increase during fasting human growth hormone is very high of course your uh, heart attack your uh, all cardiac problem will reduce the brain activity the cognitive function i feel for me it is working better I, I, nowadays i during the end of fasting only i am reading many uh, I, I have prepared these slides in the early i mean morning only so 7 8 o'clock at the end of my 18 hours window so once you lose your weight these are the benefit migraine 57% resolved pseudo tumor survival 60 96 dyslipidemia 63% and type 2 diabetes also getting reverse okay there are and cardiovascular risk 82% obstructive sleep apnea reduces okay my, one of my friend was using cpap or sleep apnea now after reducing the weight he became normal so the quality of life improved in 95 percent of the patient once you start losing not less than 10 kilo even 5 kilo 5 percent or 10 percent you will feel the benefit the mortality risk is 30 to 40 percent so it is not only the weight you have to reduce your waist circumference automatically the intermittent fasting as, as prasanna told with little bit exercise which increases heart rate your belly fat will melt away another thing is your gut bacteria will be replaced with good bacteria so the dysbiosis will not occur that is the imbalance between good bacteria and bad bacteria so because of that there are so many benefits your obesity reduces if dysbiosis occurs means your obesity will occur, diabetes, all these complications. This will be prevented if you do fasting. So heart health improves. Brain function, Alzheimer's, uh, I think uh, it can, you can prevent Parkinsonism 
and your cognitive cognition will improve and also the <coughs> reproductive function strength pathways also improves okay cancer prevention nowadays there are lot of talking about cancer prevention even for the cancer patients uh, you can uh, i don't know you have to consult uh, some expert but they are uh, advocating intermittent fasting so once you you are preventing heart attack you are losing weight you are alzheimer's you are preventing okay all this uh, you are preventing diabetes you are preventing automatically you will live longer without any problem so please think about it okay so already people told the failure in intermittent fasting is they think even fasting window they think they can take milk or they can take plantains or uh, fruits it is not acceptable only water or green tea without sugar or coffee without sugar so overeating during eating window also lead on to suppose you you are need uh, 2000 calories you are eating 3500 calories you are not expected to lose weight disorder is zero only so summary health benefits of intermittent fasting fat burning maintain the healthy body weight raise in growth hormone occurs that's why you have the uh, lipogenesis and also you can uh, have a uh, 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 good physique in when increase your muscle mass your leptin and uh, insulin sensitivity normalizes growth in hormone level falls actually during intermittent fasting your appetite decreases that is the most important thing when compared to calorie restricted plan so where diet complicates life fasting simplifies where diets are expensive fasting is free where diets can take him take time fasting saves time where diets are limited fasting is available anywhere recently i went to gujarat for seven days along with singaravelu muthukumar everyone i was following fasting no problem at all their diets are very able efficacy fasting unhostined efficacy i am seeing in front of us many people are benefiting there is no more powerful method for lowering insulin and decreasing body to only intermittent fasting can thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you for your uh, practical experience rich rich sir so uh, pratap we will go to the next last speakers of the session sir no i have one more one after what? that there are lot of questions we will go through that yes, so sir. pratap pratap anyway i will also i will finish up my run i don't know he, i saw you see him posting okay epa so ah pratap ah the brother is sir you are there
Sir, good evening, sir. Are you able to hear me, sir? Oh, you are there. Yeah. Hey, sir, I'm here, sir. Oh. Kindly make me a call, sir, so that I can go. Oh, yeah, here. yeah. Oh, one minute, one minute. I will close my... Yeah, you, are you able to uh, share? Not yet, sir. You have to make me go, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, you are here only. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now I will. Yeah, sir. Right yeah. now I can do, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening, one and all. First of all, I thank Gunasing, uh, sir, and IAP Dhruvana Malai, who has given this opportunity to talk about diabetes and intermittent fasting in this excellent meet sir uh, since i'm going to talk last uh, previous speaker has uh, done everything about intermittent fasting and they have explained very well about intermittent fasting and they have made my job very easy sir sir are you able to hear me sir yeah 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 fine yes, okay yes, thank you sir okay. uh, first i'm going to talk about epidemiology before uh, talking about diabetes and obesity epidemiology India is right now in number one place and it has achieved number one place in world highest population. The same thing happens with diabetes also. We are running a race next to China. Very soon, uh, India will be number one in diabetes also. And it is a worrisome factor and it is a right time. We have to intervene both in diet restriction as well as improving our physical activity. Regarding diabetes, already 537 million people are living with diabetes. And it is estimated that around 541 million people were pre-diabetic. The scenario is same as well as in India. In India, around 77, people, 77 million people have been living with diabetes. And around 73 million people are living with pre-diabetic. Usually, the urban and uh, rural ratio has been decreasing. Previously, in ICMR in diab study, it has said that the incidence of diabetes are more high in urban area which is around 11.2%, while it is around 5.2% in rural area. But this urban rural gap has been very shortening. At the same time, the incidence of obesity also increasing. And it is estimated that around 167 million people are obese. And out of one out of seven men and one out of five women will be estimated, uh, uh, expected to become obese by the year 2030. Thus, they have coined the word diabetic city which means both the incidence and obesity uh, of uh, diabetes and obesity are increasing. The, uh, the one of the most culprit is insulin resistance. Since diabetes as well as obesity, they share the common pathway of insulin resistance. How does insulin resistance occur? Whenever you are going to take food in excess, these excess carbohydrates will be converted into triglyceride and deposited into adipocytes. And these various mechanisms has been uh, uh, very well uh, uh, said by previous speakers. I'm not going to go very deep. And uh, I'm going to have an eagle view regarding insulin resistance. These are the three main proposed factors. By increasing uh, deposition of triglycerides, it causes intracellular stress, inflammation, and impairment of metabolic function, which has been caused by increased cytokines like chemonecrosis factor alpha, interleukin cysts, and resistant and retinal binding protein. Apart from this, they have an ectopic fat deposition both in the liver as well as skeletal muscles. And the one most important thing is mitochondrial dysfunction. Here plays intermittent fasting. By doing intermittent fasting, we are able to activate mitophagy, which is the part of autophagy. Thereby, there is a remission of diabetes possible in uh, by doing intermittent fasting apart from uh, weight loss induced remission. And this is the uh, this is the various factors causing mm -hmm. insulin resistance and this insulin resistance may be associated with development of future diabetes or future hypertension and future dyslipidemia and future atherosclerosis with decreased fibronatic activity and increase in hyperuricemia and polycystic ovarian disease. And whenever you are going to have excess sugar, they have lipo lipoprotein oxidation as well as glycation, which will result into decreased uh, hepatic glucose uh, uh, output reduction. All these uh, activate the sig uh, signals in insulin. Thus, signals uh, insulin causes further increase in production of insulin. Thus, there will be a hyperinsulinemia level or hyperinsulinemia syndrome or metabolic syndrome. And it is characterized by five points uh, increase in fasting sugar, increase in blood pressure, increase in small dense LDL, as well as decrease in good cholesterol, HDL, 
followed by increase in waist circumference of more than 88 cm in men and more than 80 cm in women all this lead to chronic inflammation as guna singh sir said about reversible resolution and remission i'm going to talk about these three various uh, bodies like ada esta have they, they have used the word very cautiously and they have used only remission they haven't used uh, any word regarding reversible or resolution and this is a big marketing that takes place that there is a complete cure for reversible but till date we had to wait for reversible of type 2 diabetes only remission of type 2 diabetes uh, remission of type 2 diabetes is possible and it is a better word to use and it is a appropriate term to use remission of diabetes mellitus both in type 1 diabetes mellitus as well as in type 2 diabetes mellitus and these there are various remission first of all what is partial remission partial remission means we are able to achieve the glucose level that is below the diagnostic criteria for example you are able to achieve fasting sugar less than 126 and pp less than 200 and that has been maintained without any uh, medicines or any pharmacotherapy then it is called as partial remission mm -hmm. when we are ab able to control the uh, uh, achieve the blood sugar of fasting less than 100 and postponed less than 140 then it is called as com complete remission when it is has been maintained for one year without any medicines and regarding prolonged remission and there is a complete remission for five or more uh, years without any pharmacotherapy this remission is uh, remission of diabetes is possible but it it is better to use very cautiously regarding reversible as well as resolution of both remission means there is a temporary diminution of severity of disease and, and regarding reversal is it is a complete action opposite to the disease caused that occurs in the type 2 diabetes or in type 1 diabetes and regarding intermittent fasting this is a old uh, method that but it has been recently it has gained more attraction because it has a great potential for correcting many metabolic abnormalities apart from that it has a good better adherence other than other methods and intermittent fasting it is a intervention strategy where in individuals are subject to various periods of fasting previous speakers have said about 16 uh, 16 to 8 method 20 to 4 method 5 to 2 method or barrier diet or alternate day method or eat stop method these are the various type of intermittent fasting uh this is this uh these are the things happens when we are going to start fast the first stage is gastrointestinal phase and all the carbohydrates will be depleted sugars will be depleted followed by there will be increased breakdown of glycogen by the liver followed by increased production of gluconeogenesis fat oxidation and ketogenesis uh, these are the thing has been explained by the previous speakers i don't know don't want to continue the same thing and regarding direct trial this is a direct trial that has been conducted in and around united kingdom in this study they have recruited a uh, type 2 diabetes patient of more than, of less than 6 years with more bmi of more than 27 to 47 and they have uh, divided into two groups and in one group they have given acute restriction of calories they have given uh, only 825 to 853 kilo calories per day which has been divided in 59% it is contributed by carbs and remaining 13% is contributed by fats 26% is contributed by protein and fibers by 2% for consecutively 3 months after 3 months for the next 2 to 8 weeks they have reduced the carb count from 59% to 50% and they have increased the fat content by 35% and protein by 15% and they have found that at the end of one year they are able to achieve weight loss of more than 15 kg and they are able to maintain the remission of diabetes mellitus in around 68 participants and they have continued the same study and the patient has been um, monthly visited and they have been followed every month and it has found that at the end of second year they are able to maintain remission in around 53 participants and they are able to maintain the uh, achieved weight loss around 10 kg and these are the journal of applied physiology in this upright physiology they have taken eight healthy young men and they are subjecting to intermittent fasting every second day for 20 hours consecutively for 15 days the main purpose of the study is to test the hypothesis that 15 days of intermittent fasting and refeeding improves insulin stimulated glucose disposal and they have found that fasting every second day increase the insulin sensitivity approximately seven times according to the homo assessment study and decrease incidence of diabetes future diabetes and they have found there is a decrease in circulating leptin level after 8 to 20 hours of fasting thus these are the main four reasons why we have to follow intermittent fasting at least 14 plus hours per day 
the first thing is intermittent fasting forces your body to burn more fat thus less blood sugar in your body then the more fat you burn this has been said by john rowley a wellness director of international sports science and association if increases your energy and metabolism adrenaline causes more energy more alert and you are more focused it forces your body to burn fat and intermittent fasting naturally increases the growth hormone we all know that growth hormone is a fat burning hormone and helps to maintain your muscle mass while fasting and eventually it eliminates your hunger as well as craving it reduces or normalizes ghrelin level and there is a less appetite and this is a recent uh, phenomena regarding covaxin of pancreatic cells various pancreatic cells to become beta cells zoho one of the uh, scientists they have found that it is a innovative and physiological desirable approach and they have uh, they have uh, done this study by injecting neuro3 mafo and pdx1 gene in mice and they have found that there is a regeneration and replication of beta cells can be achieved by injecting these three genes namely neuro3 g mafo and pdx1 and these scientists they have uh, also had mixed expression of pax1 gene by this mixed expression they are able to convert uh, many lining cells of pancreatic to convert first into alpha cells further their alpha cells will be converted into beta cells this has been achieved by in animal state specifically with mice the same thing happens when you are going to do fasting when you are going to do fasting mimicking diet you are going to in, uh, increase the expression of neuro g3 mafo as well as pdx1 gene thereby there is a replication as well as regeneration of beta cell producing insulin is possible one more thing by doing fasting we are able to reduce protein kinase a as well as memalin target o rifamycin by doing this they are also able to do and replicate and regenerate the beta cells producing insulin thus this one more mechanism that may be applicable by doing fasting apart from we are able to reduce the weight loss apart from increase uh, stimulating the mitophagy is there any health intervention which has 360 degree impact definitely yes that is the one thing is intermittent fasting what are the benefits of intermittent fasting by doing intermittent fasting definitely we are going to reduce triglycerides L bad ldl small tens and ldl level glucose insulin levels crp blood pressure your uric acid will be reduced your fat mass as well as you are able to reduce your weight apart from that we are not only uh, going to reduce these factors we are able to increase the good cholesterol this high density cholesterol as well as the increase in lean body mass but we have to be very cautious while doing fasting specifically for diabetic patient because there are increased chances of having hypoglycemia when it is not properly followed or properly monitored with self monitoring of blood glucose and there is incidence of hyperglycemia and dk also may occur since the uh, um, whenever the patient goes for fasting the patient forget to take even water this causes dehydration when there is a dehydration there will be increase in intraascular volume which further aggravate the uh, fibrinolytic activity thereby having the chances of uh, getting thrombosis and stroke or more while doing a uh, fasting with a complete uh, cessation of fluids even with water and these are the downside of fasting patient will be having hyperphagia and they have a sense of uh, hypoglycemia uh, at the initial period they will start eating more their patient may go with rapid weight loss there is a loss of lean body mass and there is a loss of skeletal mass patient will be uh, some patient at the starting uh, time they will be feeling irritable and the incidence of depression as well as hypoglycemia chances are more while in the initial period and contradiction and special precaution should be taken during for fa uh, intermittent fasting for the uh, respective patients any patient any brittle type 1 as well as type 2 diabetes those patient with extreme fluctuation of blood sugar it is better to uh, not to follow intermittent fasting apart from that those patient with failure like renal cardiac and liver failure and active progressive malignancy patient it is better to avoid intermittent fasting and more thing pregnancy and adolescent and children so they are not ideal candidate to do intermittent fasting and this is my last state and this is the take home message first of all uh, stop uh, giving printed diet chart for all diabetic patient it is of no use if that diabetic diet should be individualized and tailor made depending upon the patient weight and other comorbidities 
and it has various signals and shown benefits towards the doing of benefit uh, intermittent fasting in both diabetic as well as non-diabetic patient. But it, it uh, but the robust evidence should be there, and it is a need of heart so that intermittent fasting is a good thing for diabetic as well as non-diabetic patient. But intermittent ne fasting needs caution. But intermittent fasting is not for all. It is only for highly motivated, well-educated, and well-informed patient. I am going to uh, stop this slide by saying, no one size fit all. As, uh, once again, I thank Dr. Gunasingh sir, as well as IAP Thiruvannamalai, who has given this opportunity to talk about diabetes and intermittent fasting. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your nice lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, over to Gunasingh, sir, for his uh, next topic. Now, one minute. I, I, I will just, if uh, possible, I have to share. Um, share. Let's stop in the room. Yeah. Are you able to see? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Quick, sir. Uh, for five minutes, maybe less than five minutes. So this is, uh, you don't have to completely change your eating habits like you do on other plans. Okay. Yes. If you do fasting correctly and focus on healthy, nutritious food, home-based food, Intermittent fasting doesn't tell about what diet you need to do. Maybe in your extreme case, when you are not losing weight, you may <coughs> uh, follow a low-carb diet. Otherwise, well-balanced diet, avoid junk food. That is the only message, okay? Are you? Oh. So, there are some studies says that study, uh, study done over the years. First, all diet work. Second, all diet fails. Okay, that is the message. He, uh, Jason Fung says, basic of good nutrition can be summarized in these simple rules. Eat whole unprocessed food. Avoid sugar, naked sugar. Avoid refined grinds. Eat a diet high in natural food. He advocate uh, olive oil, uh, butter, and um, also coconut oil and balance reading with fasting is the uh, e e a healthy snack is one of the greatest weight loss deception there is nothing like snacks you whenever you take food six times eight times the insulin goes up okay Fasting by taking completely different approach, it's much easier to understand. It's so simple that it can be explained two sentences. Eat nothing, drink water, tea, coffee, or bone broth. That's it. Other bone soup under madri. Okay. Recent study that a seventy percent of the weight loss response obesity predicted by insulin levels, not willpower. We used to blame the patient; they are not following the proper diet. But he says. It is all hormonal. Too often, our current model of obesity assumes there is only one single true cause, that not all others are pretended to be thrown. Let's come back. Endless debate ensued. Too many calories cause obesity. No. Too many carbohydrates. No. Too many saturated fat. No. Too much red meat. No. Too much processed food. No. Too much high-fat diet. No, too much wheat. No, too much sugar. No, too much highly palatable foods. No, too much eating out. It goes on and on. They are partially correct. 
So, simple thing is eat only when you are hungry. Pasit pusi. So, avoid naked carbs like sweet, sugar, brown sugar, naughty chakra, karpati, or baked, I mean, uh, charts, ice cream, this, that, everything you will need to avoid. Okay. So, all junk food, high in fat and sugar and salt, all energy drink, they are cheating us. It's a mango drink. It's a sugary drink. They put a lot of sugar. There is nothing like mango drink or apple drink. All sugary drink. We are cheated. Okay. So, they all ultra processed foods are anything with label is our ultra processed. There is our obesogenic insulin resistance. It increases. Childhood hypertension, psychological behavior. These people are getting addicted to the uh, 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 adverse, uh, I mean, the, the highly palatable uh, food. Okay, the, these are the cheating. Masa is a mango drink. No, it's a sugar syrup. Fruity, it's a sugar syrup. All bakery items to be avoided. So, Jason Fung says reduce sugar refined grains, moderate protein. He says 20 to 30%. It's a little high. Natural fat, butter, olive oil, coconut oil, etc. Increase fiber-rich food. He also says apple cider vinegar it will reduce the insulin spikes. Fiber-rich for uh, fruits and vegetables. So fiber-rich food, protein, I eat, uh, at least nowadays, I eat egg, yellow, white, three to four eggs per day. Healthy fat. Even he says coconut is good. Fiber. So, controlling. Eat slowly. At least take half an hour. That will reduce your appetite, reduce your uh, intake. This is called 80% full. This is called Harahachi Boo in Okinawa. So, just feeling full, okay? Then you stop. Control your hunger. Healthy fat. Fat it is a satiating food. Satiety, protein and fat will increase your satiety. Carbohydrate will increase your craving. So, drink a lot of water. As Prasanna said, 4 liters or 5 liters. Nowadays, I am, because it's so hot, we are drinking so much of water, take a lot of protein. That will reduce your appetite and also increase your satiety. Good sleep. Nowadays, I because of the intermittent fasting, your, your spikes, I mean, ghrelin will come down and your appetite will go down. Your, you can go for walking or workout. Lot of fruits and vegetables. So, nuts, coconut, soup, as uh, Dr. Bhaisbhya said, Lemon juice with salt will reduce your appetite. Green tea without sugar or sweetener. He says cinnamon with green tea. I saw some, this one. Green tea with cinnamon. Uh, lavanga patta. Chia seeds. Put two teaspoons. Choke it for 20 minutes and drink. It's got a lot of fiber. Apple cider vinegar. I don't have experience. Previously, about four or five years I took. It is uh, not uh, that much palatable. Avoid triggers. Suppose you, you can't control when you're going to party, please you don't go there. Message, eat a balanced home food. Okay, intermittent fasting. Suppose if I am not losing, then you may go for low-carb diet or ketogenic diet or paleo. Plus, otherwise, you can jolly well do your home-based food. Avoid junk food during fasting zero calorie. Many people think Interval fasting means only eating full meals. No, you have to take zero calories. Thank you. Sir, Thank we you, have sir. Some, uh, yeah, we have some questions in the chat box as well as uh, something in my, uh, we have sent a mail also. First question uh, to, uh, I think uh, even our Dr. Tamilmani says, after he is lost 14 kilo, he is stuck with 84 kilo. Any solution, Prasanna? Sir, yes, sir. Ah, what's the solution? That's what, sir. Sir, can try uh, 
carb cycling low low carb isn't it yeah carb cycling one day carbohydrates and one day only protein uh, oh. or you can try one day low carbs then medium carbs and then high carbs uh, you have to confuse your body sir you have to basically confuse your body so that you can uh, uh, use little bit or uh, sir should take that uh, he has reached the threshold he has reached this ideal weight maybe i because one of my friend uh, he has lost uh, 25 kilos in one year and he is uh, 100 he was 100 kilo and uh, actually i asked him to talk in this forum he is not able to do that another thing is they say there are lot of uh, i will see the chat box weight loss okay um uh, another thing is constipation because they lack in uh, uh, fiber okay how to manage hunger so craving how do you manage uh, any idea sir tamil mani sir present yes sir yes sir sbs how do you manage hunger sir the feeling of hunger and feeling of thirst are the same drink plenty of water okay so uh, i think i have already told you you can take uh, green tea or as i said uh, lemon water with little salt and uh, uh, jason kang says it is uh, they you can go to the youtube and say how do you prepare a bone broth he says it should be bone which should be immersed for 48 hours then all the nutrients will come i don't know you put salt and take and uh, after one one or two weeks the uh, the craving will not occur if you do properly follow all the advice another thing is how long to continue prasanna life long yes sir that's what i mentioned sir the intermittent fasting is not for weight loss it is to maintain a healthy lifestyle okay yeah we have to why i am enjoying the intermittent fasting why should i stop really you you just start planning that you will never go back to that uh, old type of uh, this one somebody asked uh, is there any muscle loss will be there sir if you take adequate uh, proteins uh, uh, in fact you will gain uh, Uh, more muscle mass sir you you lose only fat in intermittent fasting okay so does affect the sleep cycle quality of sleep actually the quality of sleep will improve so i i tell you you start with 12 hours fasting as dr tamil mani started then he started 14 hours then 16 hours 18 hours so once you start doing that then it become very easy for you to go for 18 hours or 20 hours which may not be necessary but it's not difficult so once you do that your sleep quality improves there are lot of studies on that so that is not a problem vegetarian choices of food vegetarian choices whether you can uh, meet all the requirement protein requirement 60 90 grams protein or something like that is it possible yes sir uh, uh, if you take uh, uh, whole wheat uh, you have to take whole wheat sir and uh, we should never uh, uh, take this um, uh, um, uh, oh. mm. okay one uh, and cakes sir. you cannot make bread and cake without wheat sir there is no whole grain uh, uh, what is this whole grain of uh, cake or bread or which are, which is possible which is available in the market so you have to buy whole wheat flour you have to buy buckwheat flour then you can get ragi you can get all the locally available millets like tinai kamai which is rich in protein avocado broccoli uh, chickpeas you can eat, uh, 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 paneer a lot of paneer will uh, help you and uh, soya all this will give you adequate protein if you are even maintaining a vegetarian diet no avocado 
I am seeing a lot of avocado promotion when I was uh, seeing all these intermittent fasts. Healthy fat. But uh, in our uh, part of, uh, I mean, at least Tamil Nadu, it is available in Munar, Valpare, everywhere. But uh, do you use avocado? I have not used, uh, is it tasty or what? You can mix it in salad and eat, sir. It, it, it's, it's very nice. You can mix it in salad. You can make it as a puree. It, it, it reduces hunger, sir. Okay, so uh, because uh, I think we have to see other benefit how to avoid urge to take snacks. So I think the triggers, if you are in chill period, don't go near some triggers. Don't go to parties. Then you are tend to uh, take food. How do you intermittent night shift? So some people say, how do you do intermittent fasting in day and night shift duty? Prasanna? That's what you should have a written plan, sir. You, you should okay. try to not to mix and match. Rendinal when the Kalela intermittent fasting, Rendinal night intermittent fasting, that should be avoided. Uh, you should uh, uh, try to have a written plan if you are going to do a, a day and night shift. So, uh, what is going to be your meal? meal what is, so, when you are going to eat, all these should be written previously one week prior. Uh, if you plan like that, then you can definitely do that. Another thing is, many, many people asked about the contraindication. Contraindication up to 18 years. Uh, before that, I am telling you, we are practicing intermittent fasting people. We are not uh, any expert in that. So, what I learned is, um, uh, children up to 18 years, lactating mother, pregnant mother, type 1 diabetes, and... Um, uh, eating disorders, otherwise with the cardiac failure or all those things, I think you can follow properly. My friend Dr. Somasir is a diabetic, he, he followed, now he has uh, reduced the tablet uh, to half. Dr. Th our sir, Tamil Mani sir also is a diabetic. Okay. So, how do you manage sir, uh, Tamil Mani sir? With your diabetes, I think is uh, is unstable with that uh, internet connection. Uh, who should not follow? How to control craving? I think that is a. I think you you should you little uh, high fat and uh, paleo like protein. You increase protein. You can increase up to one twenty gram. Usually sixty gram is needed. You can go up to 60 grams, even 4, 3, 4 eggs daily. And uh, non-vegetarian people also. So you can increase your, uh, like low carb means you can like ketogenic diet, resistant time. People like you can go for ketogenic diet, then it will come down. Sir, for... or, can, I, can I speak, sir? Ah. Sir, oral uh, hypoglycemic drugs uh, take only during the uh, feasting window. Okay. That is what is advised by my diabetologist. Sir, Ranjit, sir. He is a diabetologist. We will ask. Yes, uh, minimum. What food can I eat after fasting? So, one of the important thing is overeating during the Fasting window, I mean, uh, eating window. Oh, I have uh, fasted for 16 hours. So, previously I have seen, you can eat anything. No, you cannot eat anything like junk food. Only natural food you eat. Whatever, I have not taken any processed food for the past one year or so. I have not gone into that. I think that is spoiling the whole world, I believe. Practice to improve motivation. A lot of occasion to attend my family. How many cheat days we can have in a month? I don't know. Well, uh, I think one or two days, but you are you are um, you are mentally stable. You can do that. One day you skip, and another day you go for 24 hours fasting. Otherwise, um, uh, it's possible. He's a 24. Sir, uh, can I answer? Yeah. 
Sir, regarding okay. craving, sir. Sir, regarding craving, uh, how much ever uh, black coffee, black tea, green, green tea we take, no, sir, it's very difficult to, uh, if we don't optimize uh, in the eating window, protein and uh, healthy fat, it's very difficult to overcome craving, sir. At least in uh -huh. the initial phase. So, optimal, sir. Sir is telling one gram per uh, one gram per kg of body weight, ideal weight. Uh, the one gram, one gram, if the target is hit with, hit with some healthy fats, uh, we can uh, over, overcome cravings very early in the intermittent fasting, sir. So, uh, Bone broth we are not used, sir. Our people mostly bone broth we are not uh, we are not used to regularly take uh, eating or regularly prepare at home. Uh, as same with avocados also. Avocado availability, seasonal, costly, a lot of factors are there, sir. But it's a very good uh, super food. So mm -hmm. we have to try. We have to try to optimize protein intake uh, and some healthy fats sir, to overcome craving. Mm -hmm. uh, to main muscle mass also, sir. Regarding vegetarian sources of protein, sir, uh, however, my, my pulses we take, they are, they are, the essential amino acid profile is incomplete, sir, all vegetarian sources. So vegetarians, they should uh, think about adding at least egg, egg to their uh, diets. Egg? At least egg, they should try to, they, they should... Uh, no, no, no. You cannot change their, their religious, uh, this one. They can but take then, uh, soya beans, paneer. Paneer uh, is paneer, a food, uh, animal protein only. Animal yes. milk is animal protein only. Yes, sir. Uh, and they can try uh, adding uh, uh, any whey protein supplement also, sir. Uh, one scoop you will cover 20-24 uh, grams of protein. Oh, what? Can what? Try I believe whey, whey protein, sir. Whey protein supplement also. If the vegetarians can try adding to hit that protein rajas. But what I believe, we are not. We got to. Uh, we should not, uh, uh, I mean, advise some whey protein to buy. That is all costly. Even a, a poorest a poor should be able to follow intermittent fasting. That's what I, natural uh, thing we should uh, advise. That's the one. Another thing is, you advise me about the resistant exercise. Today, yes, yes. today I tried. <laughs> what is the need? I just tell me whether it is improve the sir, The last sir, question. Sir, not for anybody bulk, sir, anybody in the audience want to ask some question? One or two question we will allow. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah. Yeah. You tell me about resistant yeah. exercise. Sir, uh, as we age, at least after 40, especially women, uh, some, some form of resistance exercise, body weight or weights is uh, important to maintain muscle mass, sir. Even mm -hmm. if you hit the protein target daily, uh, success, uh, consistently, to maintain muscle mass, some form of resistance exercise is uh, necessary in addition to walking, running, or cycling, yoga, whatever it is. Sir. So to maintain muscle mass as we age after 40, uh, some form of three days or two days of weight training or some resistance exercise is very important. Okay, uh, it's necessary. Okay, I will do we will, uh, we are, Even I have, sir, if you're not, if you're not optimizing a protein intake and uh, we, uh, at least some some uh, body weight exercises, it will be it it will be very easy to lose muscle mass, sir, as we progress. Even if you are burning fat, we'll simultaneously will be losing some muscle mass if you don't uh, optimize protein or uh, do some resistance exercise. Sir. Yeah, but the government, I mean, the ICMR advises 60 grams at least for adult. Yes, sir. How many people, how many in the in our uh, in India uh, do you think uh, having 60 gram per day? Oh, I'm sir, no. not, not, not more than 10% in of the people will have 10. I have I have calculated. Even after calculating, I am trying to eat so much of animal protein. I am just calculated to 60 gram. It is very, very difficult. It's I, very I, hard, I, sir. That's what I'm telling. It's very hard to hit protein target. So uh, muscle mass, uh, muscle is the biggest, uh, uh, what's the biggest proof for vaccine after 40, 50 years uh, to, for both for glucose metabolism and uh, to prevent falls and to a uh, lot of uh, other things, sir, health benefits. I think, I think we, we have uh, crossed the limit. If there yes. are any, any, any uh, question, one question we will allow. Anybody want to ask any question? Okay. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, all the speakers, uh, Dr. Uh, Innisai Ranjit, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Pratap Ranjit, I thought it is uh, coming as Innisai Ranjit. I don't know. Is your wife name or daughter name anyway? Uh, I thank our President, Tamil Manisa, and Vice President, and Satish Mar, our past President, Ramesh Babu, our President, Suresh Balan, Secretary, Trimurugan, and... Um, all the way, our friend Dr. Komasega, Dr. Prasanna, 
and um, uh, Dr. S. B. S. and um, uh, my colleagues here, uh, Dr. Pavlavili uh, and uh, Dr. Kavita, and all other people who are practicing intermittent. Please tell the benefit to the other people. Okay, don't go to a doctor and consult because if they are they if they are not following, they will discourage you. That's what I believe. What do you say, Pratana? They will discourage you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So once again, I thank uh, all the people uh, with the help of IAPTNC. We can have a physical conference in a bigger way in Chennai or other people. Okay. So we can, we can start some research also. Unless you do some research, it is not going to reach the uh, higher uh, level. Okay. okay. So uh, thank you once again. Thank you. All. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Keep us enlightening in your uh, with your uh, messages in the WhatsApp group, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you sir. So it will be Thank available you. on the YouTube, APTNC in few days. You can watch all the whole uh, this one. Sorry for the inconvenience.